This might be news to you, but we're not suffering from obesity. Actually, the problem is much more complicated. We don't have enough muscle. It turns out obesity is the smoke. The fire is lack of muscle. When you look at the studies on building muscle, it's so protective that even if you're obese and you build some muscle, you have better protective effects than just losing body fat. It turns out the problem isn't what we thought it was. I love this. Was this uh, inspired from our homegirl? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, from Dr. Lyon. Great, she, great conversation. Yeah. You know what made me also think about this is, uh, like, you know, we have that sodium conversation often, and they had those studies showing how sodium is connected to heart disease and strokes and all that stuff. They did this huge meta-analysis, and they found that sodium is not connected to any of those things. What it was oh, was wow. when people cut sodium out, what they often did is cut out heavily processed foods. So it just came along for the ride yeah. type of deal. And that made me think about our conversation with Dr. Gabrielle Lyon. And I remember some of the studies mm. that I looked up when I wrote uh, The Resistance Training Revolution. And it showed like significant improvements in uh, insulin sensitivity in like severely obese people who just built muscle. They didn't even lose weight. Yeah, yeah you've um, talked about that before. And there's also people with, you know, there's a, there's a significant minority. It's not a majority, but a significant minority of people who get heart disease, heart disease and strokes who aren't obese at all. And, and then there's that myth that obese people have more muscle in their body, but we know that they actually suffer from sarcopenia, which is muscle loss. Right. So it's actually, and then again, one more thing to add, strength, testing your strength will predict all cause mortality better than almost any other single metric. Mm -hmm. So it's it's the lack of muscle that's yeah. causing the problem. Obesity is like the symptom, right? Yes. But at the same point, yeah, we're we're looking at it wrong. We need more muscle to be more protective and fight against all well, these. Well, even us, we're guilty. I actually, you know, after talking to her and then hearing you say that right now, it's it's kind of crazy that we actually didn't think to position it that way in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. Since we already position things like where we talk about adding food to someone's diet, right? Like that's already something We were on the right track. Right. Yeah. Like what we were trying to accomplish is it exactly in line with that and uh shame on us for not thinking to communicate it that way because yeah. it's such a better way to communicate it instead of telling people oh you're fat you need to lose weight or yeah. obesity is such a problem it's like no let's just let's build some muscle because that's what we do with our clients and yeah. so if we can change the narrative right. around totally. uh it's less about being too fat and it's more about being under muscle it's way more of a clear focus of like that's that's the problem let's like just completely go in that direction well to we've it. said this many times muscle is expensive tissue burns a lot of calories so faster metabolism it's a storage vessel for glycogen what does glycogen come from carbohydrates and sugar so you want to improve insulin sensitivity you want to get better utilization of sugars uh then build some muscle now you have some place to put it muscle also puts out anti-inflammatory chemicals it's good for the your your brain um, it protects you against cancer. It's extremely anti-cancer to have muscle. Now, of course, I know what people are like, well, what about bodybuilders and power? Look, stop looking at the extremes. Any extreme physical pursuit is always, you're always trading longevity. We're talking about the average person. The average person today, look, if you look at studies now, a 20-something, I think it was like a 26-year-old male today has the grip strength of a 65-year-old in 1986, 1986, something like that. Like, how weak have we gotten yeah. where a 20-something-year-old is as strong as a 60-something-year-old, you know, 35 Crazy. years ago? Yeah. It's insane. That loss of muscle is what's it's fueling uh, the, the epidemic with Alzheimer's and dementia because we know that building muscle, the process of building muscle, seems to have some of the most profound effects there. It helps with, like I said, insulin sensitivity, so diet, diabetes. It speeds up your metabolism, so it makes what you eat less damaging. <clears throat> because you could burn off the calories. It's, again, mm -hmm. anti-cancer. Uh, we've been going about this all wrong. And then when you look at the old narrative, which is lose weight, lose weight, when you look at the data, people, when they try to lose weight by just cutting calories, and then if they throw what people tend to do is cardio at yeah. it, half the weight, almost half the weight is muscle that they lose. So they end up, they do a little better, mm -hmm. um, but then they rebound, or they do a little better, but they could be doing a lot better if they just mm -hmm. focused on the right things. We figured this out in our career yeah. that let's get this person strong. Let's get them to build muscle. Then the fat loss becomes much easier. But it, it really, it's more like we see smoke. We think the smoke is the problem. There's a fire that everybody's ignoring. It just 
parallels our Western approach to pretty much everything. Yeah. You know? It's like, we see a problem, let's fix it like as quick as possible instead of looking at the root. And maybe it's going to take a bit more work to get to you to a place where it's a sustainable, healthier place. But, uh, you know, we're, we've always taken that like immediate pill, like something to, to provide relief or, or some, you know, lower the symptoms immediately. Have you seen um, recent charts on that? Like we've been talking about this for years now. Right. This has been mm -hmm. a conversation that we've had uh, more than once. And what I haven't seen, which would be really interesting, is okay, you have that, you said what, from the 60s, a woman or a woman in her 60s since when? A what man. year? In, in what year? Uh, 1986, I believe. 19 so 65 year old, 1986 has the grip strength of like a 20 something. Oh, okay, there you yeah. go. So if you were to graph that, are we still on a yeah. steady decline or is it starting to slow up? Like we're getting, we're getting as weak as you almost possibly can by going, well, the way get a lot or, weaker. okay. So that's the part that I think is really fascinating is obviously that's already dramatic as it is. And it's, is it keeping up with that pace? Cause if that's the case within five years, it'll already be dramatic again. Well, I mean, muscle is adaptive. It's extremely <laughs> adaptive because it's expensive tissue your body will get rid of it if it doesn't think it needs it. So I'll ask you a question. Are, do you think kids are as active today as they were 20 years ago? Of course not. Or 10 years ago? Of course not. Yeah. So w they don't have, they're not telling their body, we need strength, we need muscle. So they're weaker. They're just weaker. And, and then Dr. Gabrielle Lyon even explained muscle quality. She's like, you can have muscle, but it can also be bad quality. Mm -hmm. Just like when you have a ribeye versus a filet. <laughs> Fit, strong muscle looks very different. And I didn't know this. She illuminated this, which is we don't have good me ways to measure quality muscle. Or or we do, but we don't use them. Even yeah. DEXA sands don't show this. Mm -hmm. They just show lean body mass, which can be water, glycogen, fat with fatty deposits in it. And we won't necessarily see that. So we're, we're looking in the wrong place. I mean, to put it to put it plainly, if we had a magic wand and I could either make everybody in America lose 10 pounds of body fat or gain 10 pounds of muscle. Be far better off gaining 10 pounds of muscle. That it would be way more effective across the board. 10 pound muscle gain versus a 10 pound fat loss. We would see health metrics well, dramatically improve. Especially if you consider the percentage of people that actually lose 10 pounds, how much is muscle and yeah. how much is fat. Mm -hmm. So think of it like that even. Uh, if you could put 10 pounds of muscle on somebody or even lose just 20 pounds on the scale, yeah. I'd still say you're still better yeah. off considering that most people that drop weight- yeah, Like eight of it will be muscle. Yeah, they drop just as much as uh, muscle on the way, which would potentially make them a, a weaker, just as fat version of themselves yeah. by even losing 10 pounds on the scale. So yeah. There's another metric that they've used even, because the hand grip test is the easiest one. And really there's mm -hmm. nothing special about hand strength it's just a it's just a proxy just for the overall recruitment yeah yeah just showing over it's basically will relate to overall body strength but another one that they've done is uh can you get up off the floor without mm -hmm. having to hold on to something which is also another way to show overall body strength which will and they predict all cause mortality with that as well yeah it's really crazy but when you think about it the way that we approached our training in the back half of our career when we knew what we were doing that's exactly what we all figured out on our own because, you know, for 10 years, I trained people. And it was just, oh, man, it was back and forth, up and down. I can't figure this out. What's going on? Is it their lack of discipline? Is it my approach? What's going on? The back half, I was like, I'm going to get them strong. I'm going to get them to build muscle. And then everything else fell into place. I, I would have clients who would lose no weight on the scale, go get a checkup, come back and be like, oh, my God, all these numbers are so much better. And I'm still overweight. How is this possible? I'm like, well, I mean, you built muscle. And I think that that's probably making the biggest impact. Yeah. Pretty mm -hmm. wild. Today's program giveaway is the Super Bundle. That's a huge bundle of programs. You can win it, but you have to enter. Here's how you enter. Leave your leave a comment under this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Hey, we also have a sale going on, which ends in one day. You have one day left to take advantage of the sale. Map Symmetry, half off. RGB Bundle, half off. If you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Anyway, back to the sodium one. I got to read to you guys that meta analysis because that was a that one that one sparked the conversation I just had. But check this out: there they 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 did seven they did a meta analysis of seven studies, which involved over six thousand subjects. This was in the American Journal of Hypertension. No evidence that cutting salt intake reduces the risk of heart attacks, strokes, or death in people with normal or high blood pressure. And then, in the Journal of American Medical mm. Association, wow, they reported that the less sodium that study subjects excreted in the urine, which is a measure of prior consumption, 
So people who had less sodium had a greater risk of dying from heart disease. We told mm. that one we totally messed up. Totally wow. got that Completely. Wrong. Yeah, wow. totally. Which is I, why I think a company like Element Element T is crushing yeah, right yeah. now. I think people are 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 becoming they had no idea they're deficient. They're becoming and they feel more better. Yeah. yeah. They're drinking this thousand milligrams of sodium in their water and they're like, oh my God, I feel so much better. What the hell's going on here? Well especially our our population of people, right? The people that listen to this podcast. If you listen to this yeah, podcast. Yeah, if you eat fast food all day. Yeah, if you if you listen to this food. podcast, most likely you're yeah. at least attempting to to eat healthier, be a healthier person, yeah. eat whole foods, since that's something that we present all the time. There's a, a high likely chance that you're probably under consuming soda. And even if you're not under, like, say, the RDA, but you would benefit from it doubling where it's currently at because you're eating whole foods, right? Totally. It's so yeah. funny because it explains like keto flu, like we mentioned, yeah. you know, like some of these symptoms of like when you like alter your uh, diet uh, and, and remove a lot of these like uh, 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 prepackaged foods and, and all that kind of stuff that has like a ton of like preservatives and salt in them. Uh, for me, it was, it was the headaches, like, you know, supplementing with salt, it totally uh, helped uh, relieve a lot of the headaches. Yeah, those headaches were mine too. Yeah. That's how I know. And fatigue. Yeah, yeah class. Yeah. So I, we ran out of Element, uh, Element T because uh, they hadn't shipped us. And we just got some, but we didn't have any for a few. So Jessica and I haven't been drinking it. I could tell. Uh, oh, yeah, dude. I actually, uh, I actually purposefully got some like potato chips and some stuff with sodium and we ate them because <laughs> we, otherwise we don't eat, I mean, we don't eat processed food that yeah, much. You, Everything you, we eat is. Yeah. You guys eat and then we also eat relatively low carb. And she, you know, both of us could feel the difference. I'm like, oh, I don't feel as much energy. And she was, get, she gets headaches like you. Yeah. So we did that. Boom. Zapped it. Got rid yeah. of it right away. Yeah, so. it works. So, anyway, I've been waiting to bring this up. Okay, that's it. I got something to bring up. Bro, too, this so is, where you going, where this is, this is almost like, I feel like, you know how they said there was that conspiracy theory that the Large Hadron Collider like pushed yes. us into another dimension? Right. Now we're in a weird alternate un universe. kind of bumped us into an alternate universe. I feel like it sometimes. <laughs> this made me really feel like it. Did okay. you see, I know you saw this. I don't know if Adam even knows who this is. Did you guys see who Ukraine made their ambassador of their schooling system? Yeah. Yeah, I, I did, did not. I did, did you know see this? this. No, no yes. I did not. Who? Do you know her name is okay. Marina? Ab Ab how do you say her last name? Abrovic? Ab Ukraine did? Abrovic, yeah. Ukraine. Oh, She's Marina famous. Abramovic. Okay. Doug, can you look up Marina Abramovic and then just click on images? Okay, so. That's all you got to do? All you gotta, <laughs> that makes me nervous. All right you got to so. Google is spirit cooking in Hollywood. She's a famous, she's an artist, but she's a Satanist. Yeah. And, uh. Which she's tried to deny. Wait, what if, if she's from Ukraine and a Satanist, what does she have to do with Hollywood? Oh, she's, oh, 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 oh she's, no, she's, she's she here. She throws parties oh. for uh, the Hollywood. Oh, 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 oh I thought she, so. I, they, they'll eat like food off of models and things and people. No, and, no, like, spirit, cooking, spirit cooking is with blood, semen, yeah. and I don't know what else. Yeah, they she, make she into feed a soup. human um, uh, uh, liquids and things uh, to people at the parties. Yeah, and apparently she like uh, will take celebrities and like convert them into their weird religion. Like she's weird. She did, I think she got famous by doing this one, when she was younger, I want to say in the 70s, where she did this um, art uh, display where she had a sign and it said, do anything you want to me. Isn't mm -hmm. that what she did? Yeah. That was her, right? I think so. And people lined up and they slowly got worse and worse to where people were cutting her skin. Yeah, it was like nice. and then Stripping it got the clothes weird. off of her and she yeah. just stood there. like, And that's how she became famous through that art. Yeah. Like people were like doing like. Okay. So re what remind me, what is the position that we're giving her? Not us. Ukraine, Ukraine. Okay. made her the ambassador of their schools. Yeah. Of their schools? Yeah. This like, <laughs> come on, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like what, are, what's happening? When they talk about like the Satan, satanic cabal of Hollywood or the elites or the pedophile rings and all that stuff, she's always implicated. Yeah. She's always like Pizzagate. Remember that? That whole deal? Yeah. She's always like a part of it. And Ukraine literally I feel just like she made has her ties to Aleister Crowley and like a lot of this like uh, passed on kind of stuff from that. Well, so like I a cultist. Bro, how free, if you're a, if you're just a, a normal parent t that your kid goes to school over there, <laughs> that's the ambassador for the school, bro. bro. Like how like, freaked out are you, it's, dude? <laughs> it's just so like What's come on, on, dude. Like dude? what are we? <laughs> How do you reconcile that? Like, how do you explain that and, and not be somewhat conspiratorial? Doug, put spirit cooking after her name, so just so you guys can see. The, the part that scares me about this, too, this is not like, because you know, okay, obviously. And we're giving them, like, the news always tries billions to, of dollars. To, to make things, you know, exaggerate things. But 
No, no, no. This, this is, is like, she, you know, well, I mean, it's not like she did one time or it was, it's like, this is like uh, everything you see right now that Doug's pulling up is all connected to this shit. Yeah, bro. She, uh, what the? Uh, yeah, yeah. She's weird, It's bro. just disturbing. It's disturbing visual. She call herself an artist all she wants, but I mean, it's it's just like well, so there mutilated was the, the, human beings. There was this this conspiracy theory before this happened. Well, are, are those bloody limbs that yeah. she Yeah, yeah. Is that what they are, like arms and legs? Yeah, and dude. Yeah, a lot of the the symbols no, and imagery to, and stuff of like music videos and all that, like she's helped. Yeah, like craft. and like very famous. Okay, look at that picture right there with the circle of people around her. That's an actual dinner with celebrities. Yeah, do you see that right there? Yeah, and they're like sort of pretending to eat off this person. No, they actually eat eat their body uh, parts. Body parts. There. So she's had fa dinners with the, some of the most famous, most powerful people. Okay, like politicians, uh, celebrities. And they'll do weird shit. Anyway, there was this conspiracy theory that sh that <laughs> look at that that dinner with the head on it. Yeah, there was a conspiracy theory that Ukraine <laughs> was like the center of the worldwide sex trafficking network of uh, especially with children. They said this is what Ukraine is, whatever. And everybody's like, that's stupid conspiracy theory. And then she's the ambassador for the schools. What? Yeah, I mean, it's and this so is where like half of the people that uh, the audience are just gonna be like, "Well, I'm out," you know. Oh, like this is just oh, beyond. Look it me. up, but it's like it's real. Uh, so now explain it to me. Explain it to me, like the thought process of these like leaders of like putting somebody in that kind of position. Why would they do that? Why is, where's their incentive? To, she's connected to everybody. I don't know. <laughs> it's just it's absurd. And we are giving them a lot of money. A lot of money. Doug, look up, uh, just click on an article on spirit cooking so we can look at the ingredients. Bro, I don't want to see terrible. I don't want to see no more. I got this an like... interesting point on this. So what I is try it? to find, whenever you guys bring up these types of topics, I try to find, uh, you know, different media outlets that cover it. And uh, it was very hard to find. It was <laughs> kind of hidden, in my mm. opinion. But in some places that I did find it, like the Telegraph and some others that are more well known, I went to the page and the page was removed. Wow. Mm, interesting. Wow. <laughs> Scrubbing the internet now. Okay, so uh, her past dealings. Yeah, does that tell you the the ingredients there, Doug? I believe so. Mix fresh milk from the breast with fresh milk of the sperm. <laughs> Drink on earthquake nights. Oh. Uh, some of the other ones. Uh, let's see here. Cool. With a sharp <laughs> knife cut deeply into the middle finger of the left hand, eat the pain. What? Yeah. Uh. Yeah, Andrew, it's yeah. been a long time since you've been to one of these, right? <laughs> <laughs> no comment. He dropped out of <laughs> it's, it's, He's like, Brian, so we're, okay, we're going to stay down, we're gonna stay down yeah. this conspiracy, but then I'm going to bring up my... So I brought some... I wanted to bring something on a note. Doug, you'll like this one, actually. It's not like theirs. So. Doug's like, damn it. I try and bring good conspiracy stuff that's related to health and I'm fitness. I'm not going to sleep you know tonight. I got you. I got you right here. I know. I actually heard this. I, I I saw it on Rob Wolf's page. Did a, a just a small Google search, just a like little small fact check, not like a deep. Because I'd rather do it with you guys and actually have the discussion. Because I thought it was really interesting. Uh, I shared that documentary recently, the Hundred Years one, the Blue Zone one. Yeah. I didn't know that uh, most of that stuff has become like discredited because there is, and you could Google. Uh, um, oh, like, blue zone fraud. Oh, because of the pensions. Yes, I know. Mm. And I've heard of this. I did not know this. A lot of people lied about their ages so they could get pensions. <laughs> so they're, they're not really a hundred, like like eighty five. <laughs> so yes. So su supposedly there's quite a bit of this in these areas, and so it's. I guess it just discredits a lot of all the stuff that everybody starts to tout about I, the blue zone. I'll tell you what, I, if you go, I, I I think that they are mm. very healthy in some of these places for sure. Yeah. And their lifestyle, I don't think there's like a silver bullet. Like they, it's because they eat this like purple potato. No, or of course not. But still, I mean, yeah, but the, look, the, the age is the most important part uh -huh. of this. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> well, I know they it's caught like, the one. I don't know if it was a tribe or whatever that didn't really like keep good track. Like, and they, that was the whole thing. Is like it was kind of like shaky whether or not they yeah. really were like a hundred or not. Well, look at the Seventh Day Adventists. They 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 have a long life, uh, and they're what in Loma Linda, California. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, you have to look at what they have in common. Not there isn't a silver bullet. What do they all have in common? They all don't overeat. They all move a lot. They have really tight. So this is all stuff I, I know, know, but yeah. Sal, I mean, agreed, agreed, agreed. But 
the, all that goes out the window if they're all 80. Right. <laughs> so it's if it's proving that they live long and they're all 80. Lifespan. You know, yeah. Yeah. So what like, are we doing? Yeah, so it's not really that. We're just highlighting. Doesn't matter what they have in common yeah. because this that, people does the this. main thing that These is supposed to make this. them special is how long they live I and think if their age is. Off. Well, you still have higher life expectancies in areas that do stuff like that. So actually, okay. It's less interesting. Okay. So better. Okay. To that point, Sal. Uh, that's I saw Rob Wolf talking to it briefly, and he was talking about the things that you can find in Hong Kong. Yes, and he says that is like real living data right now. Hong Kong has a very long that's, life. That's, yeah, that's, you know the highest meat consumption hmm. in the world and that's, per capita. That's what he's talking about. Is like you know, the, so because because what you have right here is like with the blue zone stuff is you you you'll have somebody who's a, a pescatarian trying cherry pick stuff. You'll have a vegan yeah. trying cherry pick stuff, yeah. and then attached to like oh see these people that live long that's why or the like, wine in Sardinia because yeah. it's so high. Right, whatever, right. So yeah. you have all these these yeah, biased the groups that try and grab camp. one of the blue zones to justify whatever you know eating habits that they are ideology that they subscribe to. And he was like, basically, a lot of that stuff is faulty from just because it's been yeah. because of the people lying about their age. So he says, look at Hong Kong and what that and what's going on there. He goes, that's probably the most accurate real time data when it comes to like longevity and the way they eat. And so that was the example. Yeah, they have the highest uh, meat consumption per capita in the world is Hong mm -hmm. Kong. What is that? What is the meat consumption in Hong Kong per capita? Doug, and then maybe we can compare that to the U.S. I, I had no idea. I didn't know they ate that much meat in Hong yeah, Kong. That's, I didn't either. Man. I wouldn't have guessed that. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. That's why I thought that was interesting. Yeah. So I thought that but was I, interesting. I did read about that a while ago. Oh, um, you did about this? Yeah. I didn't I, I feel that. threatened by that somehow. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> look, I know, listen, these countries like offer- It's a challenge, you know? <laughs> they offer these pensions, and then they report you. You have to report your birthday, and it's kind of weird. Like, my, I have, so I have family members whose birthday- on their birth certificate, it's different than their actual birthday because mm. you were born at home. You didn't bring the baby to go register them for like days. So it's like they had two birthdays. Mm. This is like my dad's generation. It wasn't even that that long ago. So. Wow, equivalent equivalent to two pieces of 10 ounce steak a day? Wow. Wow. That's, that's a, that bro, that's legit. like legit. They eat a lot. Dang. Are they really active over there? They must be. Yeah. That, look at that. That is four times the UK's average daily consumption. Wow. wow, that's crazy. Well, that's that's, yeah, a, they, that's, they go that's for a big it. serving. You know that um, Milton Friedman uh, talked a lot about Hong Kong because it was one of the the best examples of what happens when a place opens up. Because Hong Kong, all they have is a port; they don't have any natural resources or anything else. And they went full on at one point one of the freest markets in the world. Hong Kong went from third world country to superpower. Well, we have that same in a very short period. Of we have that time. same example yeah. now is in India, right? That's wasn't that what India? India was not. And that's well, they're what, still not super free market, but they're much more, and they're definitely lifting themselves out. Oh, I thought they were. They're not. They're not free market. They're still. They no. They're free. They're still. They're considered. Uh, uh, you know, democratic and free market. But Hong Kong went real like. Oh, I thought that same thing. I, I could no. have sworn in Arthur Brooks's pursuit. Um, it, they're they're liberalizing or freeing up their markets for sure, much more than they were, let's say, thirty years ago. Mm. And that's made a big difference. But yeah, like I said, with Hong Kong, it went like from literally third world to superpower in a very very short period of time. Mm. Um, and like it's no no natural resources. All they have is a port. It's kind of cool. But that's cool about the meat. I had no idea. Kind of yeah. want to go there now. Yeah, You've I, been there, right, Doug? I have been there. Have you heard of their coffin apartments? No. They're the, so they have a little. Are they the ones that move and stuff? No, they're just like oh. little rooms. You just sleep in it. Yes, and they're very, very tiny. So either there or China has the Yikes. ones that are these apartments that are um, like minimalist apartments, and the, the, like the the middle wall slides out, turns into a bedroom, and then they pull. You can down. like rearrange the whole room. Yeah, yeah. You can like room is that because it's, it's so expensive to live the there? Is that why? It's one of the most expensive places in the world to live. But uh, I mean, this is like a room. <gasps> you see this picture. I mean, you live in oh an God. actual box. Wow. These are, they call them. Oh, look, and he's coffin. laying down. That's you can't even apart. stand up. Yeah. I mean, it's just like ridiculous. What? Yikes, dude. That's real? That's real. Like there's hundreds of thousands of people who live in little places I mean, you like obvious. That. Oh, oh my God, you're toilet right there. thinking about it. Yeah, it's giving me the heebies. Yeah. <laughs> it's, you know what? You you, probably, you just don't go to your room till you go to bed, I guess. Yeah, that's it. You work, you do whatever your job you is. You just sit outside and like, okay, guys, I'm going to bed. Yeah. And then you go lay down. I mean, I everything is. is just in like a little closet, I know. essentially. Oh, oh, look at that one, Justin. He's got yeah, Star Wars yeah, some, in there. Yeah, yeah. Be your room right there. Yeah, so how, 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 I wonder what the, what's the average rent in Hong Kong? You guys want to guess? If I had a guess. What do you think is more expensive, Hong Kong or, Sil or Silicon Valley? 
I'm guessing Hong, Hong Kong. Kong I really? Think, yeah. Oh, definitely. I don't know. I, I mean, if those people Valley, are living like that, I, I would. Yeah, yeah hope but they also remember expensive. that the like Silicon Valley, the the average income in California is like one of the highest in the world too. Yeah. So you figure like it's it. I, I would yeah. still guess Silicon Valley. I'm going to go with Silicon Valley still being more Let's expensive. See. Average monthly uh, for studio apartment in Hong Kong is eighteen hundred twenty eight hundred. Yeah, go to now go to the Bay Area. Yeah, yeah it's Bay Area. Like Five thousand. Bay Area is more than that. It's uh, got to be. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's still a lot. Look at that, though. For a two-bedroom apartment. It's what it is is it's that high, and then I would imagine, like, the, the medium income is lower over there, right? So yeah. that I would say that to have as high of prices as Silicon Valley with a medium income. Yeah, it's super that, inflated out here for sure. Wow. <clears throat> that's a lot, though. That's, a, that's yeah. you yeah. know, for people. So they, no wonder they have coffee apartments. Hey, are you, oh, are you following since we're talking about- Yeah, uh, as the, much as $1,800, uh, I believe. For a coffin? Well, let me see wow. this. No <laughs> way, dude. dude. Yeah, I'm not sure- Hell the no. Wow. Equivalency is it's 4200 Hong Kong dollars a month. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway. So, since we're talking about the economy, are you following what's going on with the strikes with the- no. You're not, oh yeah, twenty four hundred dollars a month for one of these little boxes. Wow. What? Oh my god. Yeah. Okay. That, now that's worse. That's, that's way worse yeah, that's than Silicon Valley. Yeah. No, I'm you gonna tell you find that something now. way better. You, than that for, <laughs> you invite your date over. You basically, have to have sex. Right? <laughs> yeah. How do I fit in here? Just lay on me. Let's chill. Just gonna Netflix and see yeah. what happens. Yeah. 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 I mean, you know, it's a closed deal you though. If you get her to come home, you know what I'm yeah. saying? It's like come it's on inside. It's like game over. She's going. In, she's getting in my bed. You know what I'm saying? Hold on. Hey, you want to come over? Hey, you want to come over my house? Like, um, I don't know. She says yes. You're like. Oh, it's done. <laughs> yeah, it's done. Deal, dude. Yeah. Where am I going to sit? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't we'll know. get creative. Yeah, let's hug each other. Yeah. Uh, Doug, are you paying attention to what's going on with the cars? With the the, the strike? The, oh, the strikes? The, oh, that's I right. Know. Yeah. I heard about that. Well, you guys, under, you guys understand that this... this They're going to make Tesla could, explode. This is going This is going to have massive implications on our on our economy. You're talking about the amount of amount of jobs that are, are on strike right now and what that's going to do to the car market and what the car market is to our economy. It's, this will. This is going to shake things up. I think more than a lot of people realize. And it's going to make companies like Tesla explode. Yeah, because Tesla is not union. So I'm They're, completely oblivious. What's happening? The, 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 the three biggest, largest uh, um, car, American automakers. Yeah, GMC, Chrysler, and Ford. All and that's a, this is the first time in history, by the way. All three have gone on strike at the same time. Did wow. you see what they're requesting? Yeah, they want four work, four day work weeks. They want a thirty six percent increase over four years, and like some, five weeks of vacation. Pay yeah, or yes. Like that. Like they just, want a guaranteed pension. So yeah. basically, I mean, let's make ourselves non competitive. In the, the temporary, exactly. In the temporary, this is going to drive things up again. So if you thought the car thing was like was crazy in beginning of COVID. We're going to see that. Talk go. about cutting off your nose to spite yeah. your face, though. These guys need to... Re like, this is... It's exactly they, right. They know yeah. they're irrelevant. So here's what's going to happen. This is my prediction. Almost, okay, you're and you're exactly where my head is at, Sal, is what you're going to do is you're going to force the arm of these three massive companies to go, okay, they want all these things... I guess we're going to have to double and triple down on automation. Yeah. Exactly. And they're going to put more money into AI yeah, to it'll be worth supplement it. those, those. It'll be worth the cost. And you're because, making it worth it because of this this much of a demand. Yeah, because yeah. here's how they do them. It's very simple math. We pay workers this much. It's going to cost us this big amount to automate everything. But then if we do that over the course of 30 years where this person's going to be employed plus a guaranteed pension, it's going to save us a lot of money. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to automate. Yeah. It's going to make the, uh, the, and you know what, this is, what's, this is the thing that I worry about is that the U.S. automakers are going to become uncompetitive, start to tank. Who do you think is going to bail yeah. them out? Well, so, exactly. okay, that's the another, world so that's, a, well, the next question in. is, you know, will we see in the first time in history where the government steps into the, in a, in a union de uh, debate like that? Like they have the government. And breaks up the union? Yeah, well, or comes in and backs up the union. And like you don't know what could like, and supposedly Biden's a big supporter of unions, right? So there's a possibility that he could come in and, and enforce something, which normally government would stay out of any how sort they of force it. Yeah, what do you mean how they're the government? Biden. No, I know that, but what I mean is, okay, so they force, let's say they they force so Ford, or they're going to shut them down. They force like, Ford to the, raise up the, to pay to pay more. Yeah. Ford then raises up prices. Ford's like, we're losing money. We're not competitive against Toyota, Honda, whatever. Ford's like, hey, government, we need help. Then they bail out. Then they bail them out. Yeah. I mean, you have to if the government makes you do that, right? Yeah. I mean, that's the, and in a way that's that the gonna, insurance, The right? way that they're going to get bailed out is they're going to be, and it's very easy for a politician to say, we need to step in and save 300,000 jobs. 
So the the more yeah. and more okay, I yeah, I have my friends. So we're gonna subsidize cars. Now. I have people like my buddy Chris Nagibi, who likely. like you know all, all, him and I talk all the time right about this stuff, and he's always like telling me like it's coming, it's coming, right? I, I'm I'm in the camp now, and if you go back far enough on the show, you heard me like ah yeah, we're gonna th this thing's gonna come down soon. I don't know. I don't know if we're. I think we're actually at an, an unprecedented time. I think that things are shifting. And we'll talk about this 30, 40 years from now as the time when m most people could still afford a car or a lot of people still could afford a house. And that's just not going to be a thing. And it's going to, we're already moving this direction of the gener young generation, it's Ubers. How many kids still, don't get their license because yeah. they're just, it's convenient to Uber and I do that. They're going to put the car prices so, you're going to have to be rich to own a car, you're going to be rich to own a house. And I think that this idea that it's just, the bubble's going to burst and it's going to come all the way back down, it's not moving like that yeah, it's yeah. almost like they're trying to just like destroy the middle class and make everybody a lower class and then have a small that's upper right class. It's, yeah. that, it's it's all we are doing is just creating a, a massive gap even more everything. so it's it's really scary especially when you think about our kids yeah like that are going to enter into this time and because cars are already very expensive crazy right? yeah crazy i told you that remember when i brought up the you guys know what the average car payment is right now yeah over seven hundred dollars yeah. that's going up <laughs> Especially with the banks and interest rates right now, sure, like yeah. I, that number was the number I gave you guys almost like a so year ago. I guarantee that number's higher. Here's now. the other thing that they may do: you know, interest thought, rates are eight percent now on a thirty year. Here, here's the other thing that they may do: they may either a bail out the auto uh, companies by allow to keep them to keep their prices competitive, or here's the other thing, which actually is probably more likely. I mean, I government about. hates Tesla, so I wouldn't be surprised if they do something like that where they subsidize it and they they hook up like. Well, all no, ones. I'm thinking what they might do just to. This might even be more popular politically is to not do that and rather uh have tariffs on other car makers so that mm. they all have to pay a lot of money so now all cars are expensive yeah and that's an easier sell politically you know no we got to stop these foreign automakers from outselling or whatever we got to save american jobs so we got to force mm. these other auto companies to 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 charge more yeah type of deal so you're i think you're right adam yikes but yeah. i mean look where are we headed anyway are we really think about automated like self-driving cars that you could get on an app. The cost. That's why I think it's going to go that way no matter what. No matter what. Right. Even that's if cars what, weren't more expensive. That's, that's how I feel too. Yeah. Like the, the, the amount that they have to become uh, as far as They're already too expensive in They're going to have to become so cheap. Yeah. It would be a no-brainer not to do those other yeah. other ways. Because those other ways are becoming more and more popular for the young gen the generation below us. And that's right? with a, a human driver. An automated car, let's say that goes and parks itself at a charging station picks you up when you hit an app the cost of that i mean i've seen the numbers on what they estimate this for it's like nothing in comparison to even a cheap car paying yeah. for gas tires insurance having to park it now you got your garage is a place for your car whereas you can make it for something else i mean i don't think anybody's gonna i, I think, think that, a lot of i think the future cars. looks like this with with the cars is you know how apple has got everybody on like this you know Basically, you're always paying a monthly payment now for a phone. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, they, oh, like my new one's up. Oh, I just finished paying off my yeah. last one. Hey, the new iPhone comes out, and yeah. then you just do it, and now it adds like 60 bucks a month. That's what cars are going to be like. You're going to have like a, a a membership to Ford mm. or something like that. Something. And and it's like you just pay your your monthly fee of $120 or whatever it is. It'll, obviously, they'll figure out where where that number is, right? Give you X amount of miles. That's right. They'll give you X amount of usage, you know, and I'm sure there'll be packages that are like very minimal. So you pay very little. Then there'll be stuff that's like unlimited. So yeah. it'll be like, I bet you that's what we will. They'll probably be a la carte too. Because I can imagine like getting a car, be like, hey, you guys want to grab some lunch? Let's get the car that has the food and then it picks you up and you got like food in there. Or let's have our meeting in the car as we go to the whatever. I mean, this is going to be very creative. And between now and then, what we're going to see is the, like, the, now that, the rich will be able to afford, yeah. you know, these, you know, V8s. It's like, people, it's, and, like, hey, it's like people who own horses now. Only rich people own horses yeah, now. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's true, though. It's no regular be, person's it's, doing polo on the weekends, you know? No. Yeah, no, I, I bet you it's going to look just like that. And I think that we're moving, I don't think anymore that we're going to see this massive bubble burst and all of a sudden house prices are going to decrease by 50%. Mm. houses aren't going to come down 50 percent. cars and they need to to make them reasonable yeah like you they have to literally It'll, everything almost, will be rent yeah everything mm -hmm. will be rent I, I mean i agree with that i think that's yeah, the direct i, mean, I think they, it's going to move that way no matter what it's where the world economic forum wants to that's where they want it that's yeah where they want but it. I, I i tell you though if if we when we go to automated cars and people don't own cars that's going to change so much more than people realize 
if you just if you just look at the layout of a city, how much space is dedicated to parking spaces and garages mm -hmm. and places that you avoid because there's no parking or I got to drive there, whatever. All the, the the loss of productivity because of traffic or I'm in my car, I can't do something else. It's going to radically change things, radically. When you don't have to, parking, what parking? It drops me off, it picks me up. You know, I wonder yeah. too if we're going to see, because the I would imagine it's m more difficult to take a city like San Jose and change it to fit that yeah. world versus build it a, a whole new one, new one that's mm -hmm. right up the road. You I know think what, you're right. Yeah, they're going to be build these smart cities, and then the, that's these what, are going to be irrelevant at some point. They'll exactly. You know what cities are already designed this way? Old cities. Old cities. Yeah, the, the walk cities. Right? Old like, cities are what we're literally we're going to work, ironically, for the future. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Seriously, in New York City, San Francisco, it's perfect for little yeah. cars picking you up, and they drive outside the city to go charge themselves. Come into the city when it's time to, you know, whatever. Uh -huh. That's what they're going to do. Oh, you think so? That, yeah. That's, that's an interesting it's thought. An interesting that's thought. an interesting thought. Because yeah. I'm thinking that it's more likely they're going to, you're going to get these where suburbs are at. Yeah. And just, we're going to build. Like, like I think, I feel like for San Jose, you would go like, we're going to go to Morgan Hill or San Martin that, or Gilroy, yeah. and we're going to build hmm. a, you know, an infrastructure to support this yeah. kind of economy. And then that, that way it's like, that ain't that far to move all those people and convince them. Maybe sort of like the testing grounds. And then they take that model and they recreate or refurbish like, you know, these cities that already exist. What do you guys think people are going to do with their garages, by the way? Think that's a lot of, that's a lot of square so footage. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you are, we already see this. It's common in the Bay Area. I mean, it's like an entertainment friend, room or yeah, the convert room. room. I or, mean, Jason, yeah. uh, our buddy Jay is his his rental property that he has. Right, he lives in Gilroy, but he has a place over here in in San Jose that he rents, and they did they like completely that garage it's like a room. Yeah, it's like yeah. a room. I think most people, especially when you think about how much rooms rent for. I know. So it's oh, they like, rent it out. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. So I think people will rent that space. I mean, that, that's really popular too. I was looking. On, I was actually looking for um, garage space in, in around uh, our area and stuff like that, just to, like to rent a garage to park one of the cars in there. And a lot of people rent their private. Hmm. They have a place like yours that has three car garage like that, and they rent store it here. Just, yeah, for good money too. It's like two forty, three hundred bucks a month. Wow. Just to rent one of your slots. Oh wow. Yes. So Interesting. by the way, uh, for someone like you, who's got that may not be using that or wants yeah. to like, yeah, 300 bucks a month, bro. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, th I mean, I'll let you park it for free if I could drive it. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. oh, I got to ask you guys. Okay. So I saw another unfortunate sort of art piece. Like, I don't know how this happens or if like, there's just not good people around them that can kind of point out the obvious sometimes to people in terms of like how things look or end up looking. And it's supposed to be for like a serious thing. Like a lot of times it's, you know, uh, commemorating somebody that did something like, it's like a Martin Luther King statue or something that's like, you know, really important. So there's this statue in, in Palm Springs that was supposed to commemorate AIDS. Oh, I saw this. What was it supposed to be? AIDS. And, okay. And like, you know, the, the, the constant battle in the community and like, you know, it's, it's a very serious huge, subject. Huge gay community in the Huge in gay Palm community. So they made a giant you know, butthole. Every, <laughs> It looks like Shut a giant up. butthole. Bro, that's, no. what, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm kidding. Oh. I saw the article. I'm, I'm not even joking. I saw the article. Wait, let me see it. Yes. Let like me a giant see it. butthole. It's concentric circles, okay, on the on the, on the the one side. On the back side, it looks like a blown out, like, <laughs> no. <laughs> looks like a blown out balloon knot, dude. I mean, what literally is like just this. And everybody's saying that? I mean, yeah, if you look at it, it like that's the first the thought everybody has. Doug yeah, like just make like a, a, like a monarch like, thing or whatever. Bro, you know what I'm saying like just make like one of those. Like you, you literally made something community like a AIDS, giant butthole. You, you, you come up with butthole. Look at it. Oh, no. Like, did you go see it? Just no, I didn't. I actually was wanted to like you take a picture uh, with your head in it. It was a real thing. Your, put, put your head. <laughs> please, please, do, please, please do that. <laughs> what? You go through a portal. What? Uh, such a on. weird, such a weird thing. I to just do, don't huh? understand. Hold on. What does the dude? article say at the top? Like, scroll up. Keep like, going. what a fail! Like. In, in response to criticism, they don't want to say what it looks like. Hey, don't, <laughs> hey, don't you think it's okay? It's got to be a massive troll, right? That's a massive troll. You get, you get, uh, like they, someone. Yeah, like, how does that they pass contra all that money? No, that's a massive troll. You get your your homies with whoever it is in the city. You're like, hey, you have an artist friend. You're like, hey, I'm, we're gonna we're gonna contract you to do this. <laughs> and it's like a little fist bump behind closed doors. Like, Bro, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna make it a giant butthole. <laughs> but we'll so make it just bad, a little dude. off, just a little yeah. off, so we can argue that it's not. 
What is he? What is it supposed to say? I mean, supposed to be? Did it say? Because wasn't that that one Martin Luther King with had yeah, it arms? Like it looked they like call a, big it a ring, a ring of something, dick? something yeah. ring or what? It's like a ring. Something. A timeless, enduring landmark hovering above the ground. That's what it says. A potential touchstone for every category of community and individual struggle. <laughs> okay. This is the, the the part that's funny to me. It's always the artist that like describes it in all this like eloquent detail of like their thought process and that's creating it. But at the end of the day, you just go to look at it. You're that's like, that's a troll, bubble. bro. That's what I mean. I'm telling you. I want to see more pictures of it. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Look at that. Yeah. It I'll get you one like for it. your house. It I'll does. get you a, little, I'll get <laughs> you a, little, big, a model version. Big, <laughs> all you got to do is look at, look at a, a cat, right? Yeah. And no. Walk away and that's exactly <laughs> what it is. It does, dude. Hey, you put that... Put that in my front yard. How far is that from your house, Justin? Oh, it, so it's it's like half an hour because it's oh, Palm so Springs. It's Mine's nice. more Palm Desert. You're in oh, you're yeah. in the suburb, right? Yeah. Someone walks. So what, up. I'm what is not that? I'm not as familiar with the area. I've only been there a couple times. What, what, tell me, like Palm, Palm Desert versus Palm Springs. It's, it's just a, a little it's further. A yeah, it's a little further. There's La Quinta. Uh, there's Palm Desert to there's, the desert. Like these are all like. So where's suburbs. the where's the most travel famous place? Palm Springs. Palm Springs is the first. Yeah, because that was the first. And your Palm Desert. Palm Desert was after that. The okay. That's where I lived when I was. Had that what what out. would you say as somebody who has a place there? What is the, the big difference between the two spots? Obviously, it's hot as fuck in both. So, what's the um, big difference between the two? Does one have like way more shopping and things to do? The other one's just kind Palm of this- Springs, like the city. Palm Springs, like kind of yeah. iconic in terms yeah. of like the old style and like yeah. uh, you know. 50s like they, they had a lot more like of the the hollywood actors that went through there so you had like elvis's house and yeah. you had like all these kind of cool like but it's like it, again it's it's a different it's kind of older run more run down and then like uh, palm desert is is more like uh i forget the word but like when they kind of bring in like your like olive gardens and like oh, every, you yeah. know like they 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 sort of brought in a lot more of the modern stores you know it was weird living stuff now, it was the weirdest place to live because uh, in the winter, obviously everybody goes down there for the winter. Yeah. Weather's nice, beautiful, popping, great place. Summer, like more than half the population disappears. It's oh. so weird. Well, you, because I think can't. it's weird. <laughs> one, either if you are there, you can't Bro. go outside because it's, it's 120. Yeah. So you stay inside why, yeah. or you leave the town. Completely. Oh, no. I, I, remember, I go to the mall and you're walking around the mall. You're like, what? It's yeah. dead. Dead. It's really strange. There's only a few places you can go is the mall or like you know, go to a movie or like I'll go to the gym. Like I, I've, I've gone down there a few times. We don't rent during the summer, obviously, because we can't. Uh, so we'll end up going in like sometimes around like July or when it gets really hot. Like we, we don't even try to go in, in uh, August because it's just insane. But uh, yeah, like my shoe, I felt like my shoes, if I stayed out long enough, melt. Like, would melt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, you just get it's like, so... it's like you're just stepping in like a, a walking oven. Yeah. It's yes. You know, when you open the oven, yeah. that's what it feels like. Yeah. But it's not even, it's, it's also bright. Am I wrong? It's, it's also like the sun. Very is just, bright. Yeah, you're just like very squinty. <laughs> like no clouds. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta get in. So the pool, you gotta get in at like seven a.m. Yeah. Bro, that's and then you go till eight a.m. and then you're like it's hiding. It's so the hot the there. The pool is not cool enough afternoon. No, no. You'll, you'll burn. Dude. You have to swim. Justin in the morning. will catch fire yeah. for sure. <laughs> He'll catch fire just spontaneously. Just yeah, to ignite. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, uh yeah. I, I remember uh like it started to get hot because I, I we moved there. Let's see. I, I got there towards like closer to winter, and then I remember when it started getting to summer. I'd wake up early right to go to work, so I would get up at six a.m. 90 degrees? I was like, oh, what the yeah, fuck? Yeah. 6 a.m., bro. But 90. like winter and spring is so amazing. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Even in the planet. fall is a bit cool. But like, yeah, the winter especially, it's yeah. like perfect. But in Palm Springs, so I'm, I'm assuming, so there's a, there's a street or an area in Palm Springs that they, it's like the gay area. Is mm -hmm. that where that is? Uh, yeah, it's a good question. I don't know exactly where that's I remember located. it specifically because yeah. one of my trainers, uh, I'm like, oh, and when I first got there, I'm like, show me Palm Springs. So he's taking me through. He's like, oh, this is the... yeah. This is the gay part of, of Palm Springs. And I mean, you could tell because the stores, there was a store called Gay Mart. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes, I swear to God. There's, yeah, dude, awesome. there's like models with, you know, like some scantily clad things on them, just like hugging each other. And like, you know, it was like, I was like <laughs> walking with my boys. I'm like, oh, whoa, look at that. <laughs> This is, this is up, festive. <laughs> oh, you mean the mannequins? <laughs> yeah, the mannequins. yeah uh, mannequins would be in like certain positions uh, that were like. Hey, speaking of the boys, or my, or talking about our kids, right? So my son, uh, I've told you guys before, like the thing is two minutes, right? Everything is two Everything, minutes. Yeah. yeah, everything's two minutes. So we've uh, we've expanded, right? We there's we know a difference between two and five minutes now. Like so, he, whatever his fingers can hold up. Mom, two minutes, just two minutes, or, or if he really wants to do something, he'll ask for five minutes or whatever. Yeah. But it's so funny because is still the concept of the difference, right? So Katrina is telling. 
um, that him and I are gonna uh, gonna play some video games before he's getting ready to do something. I remember what we're gonna do, and he and Katrina's like, "Well, we have to go. We have to do this, so like that." And he's like, "Mom, just two minutes, just two minutes, like that." No, 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 no. You, I, or he's saying five minutes, mom. And she's like, "No, no, no, two minutes, two, two minutes." He's like, "Mom," and she, he's like negotiating back and forth, and she goes, "Okay, listen, three minutes." He's like, oh, "Okay." Yeah. <laughs> like it was this huge deal, big ass deal about yeah. you know two minutes versus five minutes. Katrina gave him an extra minute. You know what I'm saying? He was like, "Okay, hey, he's, he's a deal maker." Okay. Like yeah. his dad, yeah. that's what he did, we'll take bro. it, bro. So funny, Sold. you know. So they're like, he's like, "Okay," you're like totally happy to. He was like, you can tell he's getting frustrated about the he wanted his five minutes. And Katrina saying no two minutes. She negotiates three, and he's like, "Oh, okay." Isn't it funny? When yeah. yeah, you guys, that video I sent you guys, I showed you guys of, uh, of my my oh, two and a half year old so great. lying so great. <laughs> while while he's doing while it, doing it touching the stuff. Yeah. Are you touching that? No, yeah. no, 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 I'm not. Yeah, no, she goes, what do you, because she had her phone, she turned I her phone on to it. hide it so we could hear it, you know, so she could record him. And she's like, what are you doing over there, Aurelius? And he goes, I'm not touching it because I'm not touching it because yeah. I'm not doing it I'm not while he's doing it. I'm not touching it. Yeah. He yeah. said it like <laughs> she 12 times in a row, like so guilty. <laughs> can you come over here? I don't know. I can't because I'm not touching this. If you're not mad because... I'm not because I'm not doing it because I'm not. I'm saying I'm not. I'm not doing it because I'm not. Are you sure you're not doing it? No. It's a, it's a good time. <laughs> it's a good time. No, they're fun right now. Dude, oh, they're sure. so fun. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. Oh, dude, I, you just reminded me of a um, very interesting article I read on children's depression and anxiety and how it's been rising for a while. Mm. This is this is the best explanation that I've heard so far as to what is going on. There was a big uh, study looking at what could be the connection between this just this rise in anxiety and depression in children. And what they got to I mean, I have was that. that the locus of control has shifted in children from one being internal to external. So locus of control means I am in control of certain things. External means I can't control anything. Everything's just happening. And they're saying that kids today have a much higher external locus than they do internal. And so then they further describe what's happened, how that happened. You know what the biggest contributor to that is? Well, I imagine all this stuff that we've been going through and hearing your parents talk about the pandemic and hearing about all this scary news and like yeah. all the riots Maps, and like, all that stuff. That's part of it, but it actually goes deeper than that. Well, it's here. It's, it's not letting kids have free play. Oh, mm -hmm. for sure. Like, go I, so do if you would have asked thing. me, I would have said the Jordan Peterson thing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. The, the, to me, that's the, it starts right there because that's such an important piece. If you take that out and you replace it with iPad babysitting, then you add in the fact, parent, like we've seen the most, I saw the most division in my family and friends with everything that happened with COVID and yeah. the vaccine and the rot and all this. There, if you are talking about that stuff, like this is a thing that could, to Katrina and I too are really careful about. If like one of us, you know, we're adults, so if she brought up something that she saw in the news or a friend said something like that, if we start a conversation like that, if Max is in the vicinity, like we shut it down. Like, oh, oh tonight we'll talk yeah, about it. Can they hear it? Oh, yeah. yeah. So, like, we won't even talk about it, even though it's not even a fight. It's just a com conversing about fucking drama like that. Right. I don't want him to even hear about that. There's no reason for him to even- Because he can't do anything about it anyway. Yeah, exactly. His, all he should be worrying about is playing and yeah. his things that he's well, into. And so we well, make so sure to Well, so this goes into that. the free play thing. And basically, and this is totally true. They're saying now, this is true. Parents don't let their kids just go do whatever they want. If kids play, parents are controlling the play. You're playing with this. It's at this mm -hmm. time. It's with mm -hmm. this kid. Don't do that. Do this. And so children the lose the ability to explore, experience, fail, and solve yep. on their own. You know what I love about this? Yep. That you're bringing this up right now. And so we had some stuff that happened at, at his Max's school already that I was really concerned about. Went down there. Everything ended up working out good. And I'm very happy about where we're at. Uh, we went to the, I told you guys what one of the last weeks we went to the, his first open house or whatever. Yeah. So they have this thing, and I, I thought it was actually interesting. This is the, the name of it, but uh, I think it's up by the second or third hour is free play. Yeah, and the kids are they they do not dictate anything. They let them choose all whatever thing they want to play. Mm -hmm. So they can go do art stuff. There's trucks and blocks yeah, to build. There's puzzles like they and they call it free play. It's mm -hmm. like every day they have or free choice is what they call it. They call it free choice, and they the kids choose whatever it That's is great. that they want. Yeah. To do. So as I'm reading this article, they're talking about how like even kids even just letting them be bored because they have to learn how to figure out what to do, or they run into problems. 
When we were kids and we went out to go play, you didn't have a cell phone, you didn't have whatever. Somebody punches you in the face, something happens. Yep. You had to go all the way home to tell on so and so. We're not going to do that. You got to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And this is how this is why this gives kids a internal locus of control because they encounter problems, challenges, they solve it, figure it on their own. It makes them more confident, less anxious, less depressed. Everything's scheduled. Everything's monitored. Everything's interrupted. No, no, don't do that. Make sure you do this. That's dangerous. Whatever. And you know, as a result, kids probably get hurt less. I'm sure, and, and I'm sure lots of you know, there's some good effects, but some of the negatives are. Anxiety and depression exploding because children are not independent. They're not figuring yeah, these the, are short term effects versus the yes. long term. It's the same thing kind of we talk about all the time. It's like you gotta you gotta take remove yourself out of the equation, which is the hardest part for a parent. It's yeah, because like, especially when you're seeing they them have do to something. learn. Yeah, they have to learn on their own and they gotta form that. You gotta hope that like whatever you uh you know passed on and modeled is gonna carry on. Yeah, because right? they were trying to connect it to like uh to technology. And they said, yeah, but this trend has been going up before technology. And it's because parents became more and yeah. more and more hyper-involved in everything that I'm kids actually surprised where I'm living, like where we've gotten a few of these other parents to be on board with that and, and allow kids to just roam the neighborhood and go through the forest and hang out and ride bikes and, and do things again. Yeah, and they'll, they'll scrap, they'll... they'll you know, get their knees like scraped up. They'll they'll get boo boos and everything else, and and it's just it's all part of them kind of understanding like how to navigate through all the terrain and how to kind of look out for each other. Somebody got lost, and then they went out to find them on their own. And it's like, you know, it, it's kind of nerve wracking as a parent because you're just like, oh man, like I lo I love that. I mean, I yeah. look for that in a neighborhood. I mean, one of the things I've told that's you guys, why we, we I mean, that's what I, that's why I picked where I just moved. Yeah, to. I mean, I, I, I saw love, kids there. I'm like, Sit. that was that was I I've talked to before about my favorite neighborhood over in Idaho that I mean, one of the things that made me fall in love with it was, was aside from it being beautiful and area, all the houses in the area but there was kids riding bikes in the street and and just that that you don't see that anymore it's like you go to neighborhoods and you know there's kids that live there you know you've seen it before but then like in the middle of the day on a Saturday or Sunday there's like no activity yeah, and yeah. It, like when we were that age it was like we literally put cones in the road we're playing roller hockey well nobody building. knew what we were doing yeah, was, mom i'll be back Hon honey be back at six yeah. okay gone yeah it's basically lord of the flies like we're i'm out in the wild and do what we want and yes there's some dangers with that but you yeah, also but, develop but more classic confidence. example classic example of overcorrection yeah, crazy. You know, you know, yes, there has been there was abductions of kids, things like that that had happened, and so the whole world freaked out and went the other direction. Now they're safer today than they ever were. Yet we, they imagine the safety in the eighties if you had a, if every kid had phones like they do now. Yeah. Like it's so much harder to kidnap kids when they got cell <laughs> cell phones with trackers on them. You know what I'm saying? Like it's yeah. a different world we live in, and yet we're still even more overprotected today than we were. I, then, you know, I know, I know, so but crazy. it's it was crazy to read because uh, especially for someone like me because I could be very like paranoid or whatever. Like oh man, fucked up. In lighter <laughs> in lighter news. Pumpkin Spice is back with Organifi. Oh, <laughs> get your get yeah. your Uggs ready, Justin. Oh yeah, get your Shine Uggs out. Up. It's that time of year. It's time yeah. for you to get those fall leaves. Throw them in the air with your cup of yeah. Pumpkin Spice I got a Organifi. nice scarf, dude. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm gonna be decked out. <laughs> get white girl wasted. Yeah, white, get girl white girl wasted. wasted. <laughs> yeah, get some white girl wasted on some pumpkin spice and Organifi. <laughs> actually, spice actually, frappuccino. actually, not Organifi does not recommend this. But have you guys tried throwing a little? Like whiskey, oh yeah. In the, oh, and the, <laughs> I, <laughs> Justin, I, I do that to most things, but yeah, that's, okay, it is pretty it's good. I haven't, good. I haven't tried that. I bet that's really good. Oh, bro, it's like a you know what is it called a hot toddy mm -hmm. or whatever. So it's kind of like that, but much I better. bet it'd be good well, with the eggnog. Hot toddies too. with the. I bet it would uh, go good with the eggnog. apple cider. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, but yeah, you throw a shot of uh, whiskey in that warm drink before you go to bed. Yeah, or spike spike some eggnog like you do for Christmas eggnog, mm -hmm. right? So I would do that. That would probably be bomb. I haven't had their gold. Throw juice. a nice sweater poncho on. I haven't done the gold juice in a while. Yeah. I haven't either. I it's actually it makes me want. to have it as funny as that is with the golden before the bed yeah oh it's amazing no no yeah. and it tastes bomb oh too, it's so for good sure. all right i got a shout out this is just this is a fan this is not a page but somebody that you're shouting out a fan i am because she went in to see vicky at faded uh, uh barbershop he's like she gave me a discount and she, like, <laughs> like, look at you cocksucker using the business to freaking hook <laughs> yourself up <laughs> hey, if you give me free <laughs> give me a free starbucks i'll, I'll say your name <laughs> <on the podcast. laughs> 
That's Bro, is this yeah. the new hustle you're yeah, running, this, dude? This is the new hustle. I'm trying to get everything. Oh, I got 50% Every, off all these. Percent. All of our listeners are like, we got 30% off people, my groceries, dude. Who are these people that Sal keeps <laughs> shouting out, dude? Shut up, bro. You did Lucky's that the off basketball. I have a lie. You did that when you were at a gym, bro. How many, how many hookups? Oh, did you bro, get I had, dude. That, when we, back in the days, this is before we've just in, they used to let us, like, work trade out with anybody. Yeah. So I had yeah. I had my dry cleaning unlocked. Yeah, I had so movie I. theater yeah. unlocked. I had car wash place unlocked. Like, yeah. Dude, you just I, mean, I somebody with a free membership, for free, and then, which is great, and then just plug it for yourself. You know what I'm saying? That was one of the best. That was like one of the best. It's like politics, bro. That's I know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they don't get paid a lot of money. I didn't get paid a lot of money. You know what I'm saying? But I got I had a lot of hooks. You don't have to pay for shit. You don't have to pay for shit. No, no, no. All right, her, name, her name is Rochelle uh, De La Paz. I, I want to give her a shout out because she, I guess, she's a huge fan, or her boyfriend's a huge fan, both of them, and uh, she got a haircut with uh, Vicky at Faded. Barbershop. So also another shout out to Faded. Great. One of the best places around. Vicky is amazing. Yeah. I love her. I told the story about her and people, people. Yeah, my kids me. won't go anywhere else. Though. Really? Yeah. yeah, dude. They're just like only Vicky cut she, my hair. Yeah, that's where, awesome. that's where my son's haircut is. I get asked all the time about his haircut. So that's where it's from for sure. Aurelius literally when she, when she cuts his hair though, he doesn't move. I think he's going to freak out. He's just <laughs> like, still. good job, buddy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I thought he would be, have a tough time, but that's he'd be great. Well. That's great. Children's vitamins are typically glorified candy. It's a fact. Look, there's a company called Haya that makes vitamins for kids that have real vitamins in them, and they're not filled with sugar, and they're not basically they're not candy, but they do taste good. Check them out. This is the only vitamin we give our kids. Go to HayaHealth.com. That's H-I-Y-A Health.com forward slash Mind Pump. And on that link, you'll get a full 50% off your first order. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Andrew from Texas. Andrew, what's happening, man? How can we What up, you? Andrew? Yeah. How's it going, fellas? Good. Good, good. What's, what's happening? <laughs> this is weird. Um, well, I guess I'll jump into a question. So basically what I want to do or what I'm trying to do is start over, start fresh. Um, I've worked out on and off, mainly off for the past 10 years. You know, I've hit goals in the past. Um, however, at the beginning of this year, I hit 200 pounds and I was like, okay, well, I don't want, I don't want to look like this. I don't want to be this. Right. So then for, for those first six months, I dropped to 20 pounds, put on muscle mass. I was happy. I was confident. It was good. Four weeks, four months after that, I really fell off again. I was like, okay, well, well, I get, I blame that on the discipline. And then I have limited equipment. I have limited uh, time. So I was like, okay, well, let me start again. But this time, let me look on TikTok, so social media, and let me see what I can do to be getting better results with limited time constraints and limited equipment. And then, well, all I noticed is that my workouts were kind of shoddy. They were, I was constantly changing it up. I was constantly trying to do the next best thing. And then, I'd watch videos were like, oh, are you doing these workouts? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, yeah, you shouldn't. And I was like, oh, well, okay, my bad. <laughs> so then I was like, okay, well, then I started listening to you guys throughout the year. And I was like, well, here you have three different guys with three different ideologies, three different methods, but they all have the same goal. So I want to see which MAPS program would be the best to start with, like I said, the limited time constraint and the limited equipment. What is your what is your time look like? Because I, I was reading your question and it says that you you work a lot of hours and so that's I'm assuming that's the reason why you have limited time. What is what is your what does your work look like and then what does your schedule look like? So, I work normally between forty to a hundred hours a week. Okay. Um, now, for the most part, my start shift is at six a.m. Mostly, sometimes. And so I wake up at three thirty to get in the workout from four to five, and then I'll that. But that's and right now I'm on a night shift, so I wake up around two or three in the afternoon, work out, and again. However, this time my start shift is at five thirty, so I got to wake up at two, work out till three, get out, shower, change, eat, go to work. 10, 12 hour shifts when I'm lucky. <laughs> so, yeah, you're so 
you're going to have to modify your training. Yeah, two days a week anabolic. That's something I would probably shoot for. Maybe. You're going to have to modify it depending on your schedule. So it might look different because yeah. it sounds like your schedule changes quite often. Is that true? Yes, at least every three months, two months. Oh, okay. Well, that's not too often. You're going to, the work, remember, your workouts are effective when they work within the context of what's happening in your life. So when you're working, you know, long hours, a uh, hundred hours a week and you're waking up super early and you're not necessarily, or you're doing night shifts, you're going to have to work out way less versus when you're working 40 hours and you have more time and that's okay. What'll happen if you know, consider this, the right amount of exercise will get you the best results. There is no other answer. Okay. So, okay. Uh, so more is not going to get you there any faster. And the, and it's more than what you can tolerate. How do I, how do I know what I can tolerate or how do I know what's the right amount? You should feel good. You should feel good the whole time. If you start to feel run down, poor sleep, you're too sore, too stiff, too achy. You're probably doing too much. Even if it seems like it's not enough, it's too much. Uh, by the way, your job is blue collar also. That's on top of all those hours, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. You, yeah, it, I, I do a uh, scaffold building in the refineries. Yeah, you know, here's the other thing too. You don't need as much exercise as the average person because you're you're exercising all day long with your with your work. Mm -hmm. so, so, what are your goals through exercise? What are you trying to accomplish with it? Uh, I, honestly, I just I'm not too focused on the strength aspect. I don't know if that just sounds dumb or whatever, but I just basically want to look be confident, you know, when shirtless or things like that. Cause like my wife tells me, cause I like to run also. And my wife tells me, well, you should run shirtless. And I was like, I don't think I'm there yet. I like, <laughs> and maybe it's just a confidence thing when I was like, I can't like that. I just find that weird. And when I first started working out, I knew like I, I look aesthetically pleasing. I look confident. I felt confident kind of thing. So honestly, it's just, I'm just shooting for aesthetics. Okay. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What does your equipment look like at home? <clears throat> At home, I have the PRX with the bench and a couple of dumbbells. Um, at my apartment, I have just the dumbbells and the machine where you can do the lap pull downs and the tricep extensions. Yeah. Do you and have a it. Do you have a barbell with plates? At home, I do, but not at work. Okay. I work and live five hours apart from each other. You know what I like? You know what I like for you is uh, Maps Fifteen. I would give him Maps Fifteen and Anabolic, and I would yeah. toggle between the two. Yeah, and and Maps Fifteen has an option that's just using the suspension trainer, and then there's an option with a barbell. And so if you're with if you're um, near the barbell and you can use a barbell, do that workout. If you only have access mm -hmm. to the suspension trainer, the PRX. That's that's not a suspension. Uh, that's a squat. Oh, rack. sorry, sorry. I was thinking about the PRX. Do you have a suspension trainer? What is that? Like a, uh, a TRX. TRX. Sorry, yeah. TRX. A PRX? No, no, TRX. TRX. So it's like it's a strap that's like with handles on yellow it. and black. He doesn't and it's have got it. handles. Yeah. 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 If you don't have it, then that's okay. Yeah, the move is Maps Anabolic with Maps 15. That's yeah. the move. The yeah, move is we'll it. give you both those programs yeah. when you have when you are at home and you have the squat rack. Follow Maps Anabolic. Yeah. And then when you are you know away. Follow maps 15. I would toggle between the two of those. You can also take anabolic and cut it in half or just do the dumbbell routine that we have included with it. So either one of those would be fine. The biggest point I think that has to be made here that Sal said is that you, you've got to learn to scale back on the, the weeks that you work 100 hours. At, at best, I'm having you train one day that week. Like 100 hours of, of labor is a, is a lot of physical work. That's right. You don't need to be training two, three days of full body routine on those weeks. The weeks where you only do a 40 hour week and you get some good rest, you could probably train two to three days a week that week of full body routine, which would be MAPS Anabolic. So you've got to learn to kind of, go, and what's great is if you follow a routine like MAPS Anabolic, it's okay. You don't have, you can pick any day and, and drop it off because they're full body routines. So if you only get two days a week, it's not like you're going to throw the body off because you didn't hit a body part because it's a full body routine. So you hit it one day a week on heavy days of or heavy weeks of work. You hit it three days a week on light days. And then when you fall somewhere in between, you pick two days a week. And then when you have to and you don't have options with your squat rack, you can go to MAPS 15 and or do the dumbbell routine. That's part of anabolic. That's how I would I would do this. A Andrew, what does your sleep look like? Uh, oof. yeah, 
probably anywhere between like four to six hours. Oh, like right now, I slept four seven eight. Right now, I'm on four hours, but I'll probably go back to sleep after this. Yeah, <laughs> I would say yeah, definitely prioritize your sleep because you're not going to get any progress if your sleep is mm -hmm. off. Totally. Yeah, that's going to throw everything off. So uh, even more important with what we're saying. Look, we never do this, okay? And I'm not, I don't, I'm not going to do this again. So if people call and think I'm going to do this, I'm not going to do it again. But I'm going to do it for you. I want you to have a suspension trainer because it's extremely convenient. It'll allow you to work yeah. out anywhere with MAPS 15 because there's a, a suspension trainer option. When we hang up here, uh, we'll have our assistant get your address. We'll send you a, a pair. And you can hang them in your doorway oh, wow. or you can hang them on your PRX. And that, that'll give okay. you more Thank options. You so that'll give you more options. Okay. It's, le it's less taxing too. So it's probably, less a, taxing. it's probably a better strategy to follow that. Yeah, with low it. to moderate intensity is, is your best friend at this point, considering like your schedule and, and the amount of volume of, uh, you know, activity you're already doing. It. Yeah. I, you, you really got to prioritize recovery, healing, sleep. So your workouts are probably going to be around that. Like yeah. I want to feel good. Now I'm going to go beat myself up and chase the gains. But those weeks mm -hmm. where you feel rested and everything's working you well, then, after you, it, then yeah, you can push it a little bit. Do MAPS anabolic. Over the course of a year, you'll be moving forward. Okay, sounds good. And um, how about like the diet aspect of everything? Because normally I count my, my macros, which, and I try and aim for like anywhere between 170 to 200 in protein because I weigh 185. That's good. Mm -hmm. And my calories before. So when I was cutting, I cut on like a, don't get mad now, right? But it was like a sixteen hundred calorie cut. <laughs> what? So, but then, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I was just like, well, because honest, and that's the thing. Also, is like I don't have time to eat like all my food. And again, I I know what y'all say on the podcast. I don't. All my protein sources comes from the protein bars, protein shakes, protein powders. It's all processed. Like I have thirty minutes and a yeah. twelve hour shift to eat. And if I have time, I'll fit in one of those. Yeah, yeah. Do you have any kids, Andrew? Yes, I do. I have one. He's eight years old. Oh, Damn, and that. you have a kid. So Jeez. look, here, oh, here's the deal. You got to have to prioritize your health and, yeah. and, and don't yeah. worry about aesthetics. Don't worry about... Dude, sleep is your best yeah. friend. Because man. you're going to hit a wall here. I don't even know how you're able At, to, to function. Yeah. Uh, okay, so here's uh, such a good point, right? So everything you have on your plate, here's the mistake that someone that's young that makes the, in your spot is you go full throttle until your body absolutely says fuck you and you can't anymore. And then you swing the other direction. You probably fall off the, mm -hmm. you fall off the train of lifting. Obese. You don't give a shit about yeah. eating. And then you, and then you go hardcore again. What it is is you're, you're when you get at, when you decide, okay, I'm going to start over, you go too much too fast. So literally what we're, we're giving you, and this is including with diet too. Don't do no extreme, feed yourself, feed yourself, hit your protein intake. That's a, hit your protein intake, focus on that. Like you said, you're doing and feed yourself. Don't worry about crazy deficits right now. And then train according to how you're getting sleep and rest and, and, and ease in start with less is more first before you ramp up and build up any right. more days in the week. Because what I bet has happened to you in the past is you you go hard one way then the other way and and what we need to do is just slowly build good habits. Find the consistency in there yes. somewhere. Yeah, and and the gauge that you want to use is do I feel good? Do I feel energetic at work? Do I feel good when I come home? Do, do my joints feel good? Do I feel well rested? That's your gauge. Not like am I you know right. am I sore? Am I beating myself up? Am I sweating? That's not the gauge that you want to use right now. Okay, absolutely. All right, man. We're gonna send you all that yes, stuff. Sir. Okay. When we hang up here, I'll, I'll make sure my right, assistant you so gets your email. So we, uh, excuse me, your your mailing address. We'll send you a suspension trainer. Okay. Thank you all so much. Appreciate it. Good, Good luck, Andrew. Right, brother. Man, that dude's uh. God damn, that's a lot. Oh, yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah. You know, I hear. Uh, you know, here's the deal for so, uh, for a lot of people, working out for all of us, I guess, is a luxury. Yeah. Because when you're, he's obviously trying to make ends meet. Yep. Okay. His job is hard. He's working a ton of hours. You don't have time or space. That's a literal example of yeah. no time, no space to work out. Yeah. And his workouts, if he does any of them, if you're watching or listening to this, and that's a very similar position to yourself, use your workouts as a way to take care of yourself in the sense that I need to find ways to like, you know, rejuvenate my body, keep myself healthy. I know that's always the thing that we say for everybody, but it's so important if this is you because- you try to push beyond that at all, you're going to crash, crash and burn. Yeah. And, and, the, and the, it, there's definitely signals his body's telling him he might be ignoring mm -hmm. uh, because he's 
tough, obviously tough, but uh, those signals are going to get louder. Dude, those crazy schedules like that and the graveyard <laughs> shift, and I'm, I'm always like, oh, that's, those are the hardest to give advice to because yeah. it's like, how do you... What do you do? Yeah, how do you maneuver in that environment? You just have to do your best, and and really it is like the, the recovery is the utmost importance, so that has to go higher on the stack than even what you think you need to be doing. I hope he listens to most all the episodes because I recently talked about one of the biggest differences today about the way I look at my health and fitness journey compared to say 10 years ago yeah. is I look at all aspects of it and think that every day there's an opportunity for me to move the needle in the right direction of being healthier than what I was the day before. So what does that look like? Sometimes that means I'm just going to make an effort to get really good night rest tonight. And I'm going to turn off the electronics. I'm going to go to bed an extra hour, two hours earlier. And that's going to do something. Sometimes it's, I'm going to go get out and do a nice walk in, in the sun because I didn't do some of that. Some days it's, I, I'm going to do get down on, while we're watching TV and I'm going to do 20 minutes of mobility work. Like some days I'm going to be like, you know what? Today is I'm going to prep my meal so I have good choices that are whole foods for the next two to three days. All those are moving the needle in the right direction of getting yourself in a healthier position versus all always measuring it by hitting macros or training my ass off. Like it's, it, it's so much bigger than that. And somebody who has got this much on their plate, they just need to make those little incremental changes or uh, choices day to day and, and start compiling those up and you will get healthier. You will get fitter. You'll get the aesthetics that you want, but focusing that way versus, Oh, I got a, a couple days this week. So I'm going to go hard. I'm going to train hell hard. I'm going to cut back calories, 1600 calories. And then you do that for like two weeks and then you're burnt and you're like, Oh, fuck yeah. it. Then you're eating yeah. fast food. You're sleeping. And it's like, you, yeah. you, you got to just ease your way in and look for the small wins in every day. Our next caller is Chris from Florida. Chris, what's happening? How can we help you? What's up, guys? How you doing today? Good. Good. Great. Hey, so I just want to thank you guys, first of all, for having me on. And I thought you guys would like to hear, um, because of you guys promoting uh, women and lifting, things like that. Uh, I'm doing split currently, and I've been able to get my girlfriend into it. She switched from a boot camp style class, and she's seen some great results with it. So I thought you guys really enjoyed to hear that. Hell yeah. Right on. Perfect. Um, well, I want to give you as much background as possible to... to let you give the best answer. Um, I've been working out for the last 15 years off and on. Um, the past three years, I work out at least five to six days a week. Previously, up until running split, I was running six and lifting five. Uh, cut out the running, followed you know you guys' advice on how to follow the program as strictly as I possibly could. Um, I started split the beginning of July. I'm 40 years old, six foot one. Um, beginning of July, I was 225 pounds at 21%. Um, this past Saturday, I actually just did another scan. I am actually 230 pounds, 230 pounds now, 21%. Um, I've established my maintenance calories at about 33 to 3,500. I've reverse dieted myself up to about 4,300 calories a day. I dispense at about 460 grams of carbs, 120 in fat, and about 350 to 360 grams of protein. So my question is I obviously don't focus much on the scale and I'm focusing more on strength and specifically on volume because as you guys know, specifically phase three is all about higher reps and really lifting as much total volume as possible. So I guess the best way to phrase the question is how much in a healthy way, how much volume or increase should I be expecting to get week over week? So for example, if I jump up 10, 15, sometimes even 20% from one week to another in one exercise, but one exercise stays stagnant for two weeks in a row. Is that something I should worry about? Is no, that just no. the nature of the beast? Yeah, it's the nature of the beast. Yeah, Chris, don't, how, don't. how long have you been working out consistently for? Uh, the last three years. Yeah. The last three years, I would say six days a week, you could find me doing something. Yeah, so linear progression where volume goes up pretty consistently or strength goes up pretty consistently or reps, right? Where you just see progress on a regular basis is wonderful for a, to a certain point. It can't possibly be perpetual. Yeah. Okay. Otherwise, be nice if it would. otherwise, you know, I, I'd be, I'd be able to work out for 12 hours a day and I'd be bench pressing 2000 pounds. I've been working out since I was 14, right? It doesn't work that way. Now that doesn't mean you can't continue to progress. So that's the kicker with, and this is the problem with workout programming and fitness is it's a science and then it's not. So the science is increase volume, increase weight, increase tension, load, your body will progress. 
Yes, that's true until it's not true anymore. You've been consistent for three years. Right around the two to three year mark for most people is when this starts to like, you hit a ceiling. And adding more volume isn't going to work anymore. It's just not going to work anymore. So what you need to do is back out. And I'm going to give you another hack that works really well for a long time, which is find movements, find exercises, find ranges of motion that you're terrible at and build skills within that. And then you'll tap back into the linear progression. So to give you an example, let's say uh, you never do um, a windmill or you never push a sled, okay? Or you never do a front squat or something like that. You go under the bar or you push the sled, you try it for the first time. You're only gonna be so good at it because you haven't practiced it. Well, now you're doing something that you can develop skill around and you will see linear progress again for a short period with that new exercise. And this is where you're at now. This is where I'd say look for those movements and exercises where you can start to build those skills and then you'll see progress again. And then the second part is there reaches a point where backing down on volume actually starts to produce better results. So this is again where the science, uh, you know, you can throw it out the window and then it just becomes kind of weird. But literally, uh, oftentimes people are real consistent and advanced when they reduce volume, cut their sets, cut the intensity, cut the you know frequency, all of a sudden they progress again. So those are two things I would look at if I were you, because you've been so consistent for so long. Uh, those are two areas that I would, I would definitely look. Yeah. I just want to just remind you that this is totally normal to see uh, in, in to be level is actually a win. So I, my goal was always like, okay, I want to make sure I don't go backwards each week on volume. So the goal was always to at least maintain that. And then what I would naturally do is go up that five or 10% on the, the workouts where I felt good. And listen to more to my body. It's like, oh, I, I, and you know this, right? As soon as you get into that first lift and you're like, oh, it just, it feels good today. The bar's moving faster. It feels, you know, 20% lighter. And it's like, oh, this is going to be a day I increase volume. Other days I get under the bar and it's like, oh, this is going to be a rough day. And, and then at those days I'm going, okay, let's, let's just hope I can maintain my volume today. So I, I literally would just do that. I would, uh, I would allow the body to tell me, when it's time to, to bump up another 10% volume like that. And that served me really well, but you're going to have weeks. There's times when I was feeling two to three weeks straight of just kind of huff, just keeping the volume the same. And, and a lot of that had to do with what was going on outside the gym. Maybe I had, you know, some stressful stuff going on with work or family, or, you know, my diet wasn't as perfect as it was the previous weeks. And so I would allow that natural ebb and flow in life to happen. I would make my, make sure my workout intensity mirrored what was going on there and be okay with maybe a little, even sometimes a little dip or a plateau. And then when I felt good, that's when I'm pushing up again. And I was just over time. So when I pull back and I look at four weeks, like a month, I should see increased volume over time. But the week to week stuff, you're definitely going to have this kind of natural ebb and flow that you just got to allow yourself to do that. And don't make the mistake of chasing the adding volume so much that you don't listen to your body when it's telling you like you're not very strong today. And so that's served me really well by just kind of yeah, paying that, attention. To that. That's a good point, Adam, because <clears throat> uh, even with linear progress, the control. So if this was a study, everything would have to be exactly the same every week for us to be able to judge whether or not the linear progression model is working. But your life is definitely not the same every week, yeah. right? So there's going to be weeks when you get better sleep, less sleep. Maybe you're fighting off an infection. You're a little more stressed out, less stressed out, more sunlight, less sunlight. So even, even, in, the, even in the context of like a beginner, it doesn't always work because the controls are always different, yeah. right? So... And that's, that's, that's a good point that Adam uh, just made. What is your workout programming look like for the last three years, by the yeah. way? Um, honestly, I follow, I know you were on the Nick bear show at one point. Um, I, I followed his, uh, BPN hybrid athlete for okay. uh, the previous 12 weeks leading right up to split. Um, I did a half marathon in, in April. Um, and then immediately after the half marathon, just, kind of boredom wanted to mix it up you know wanted to focus on something a little different to keep me engaged um found you guys about a year or so ago so it kind of perfectly worked out that as i was kind of getting burnt out and running listening to you guys and you know was really hyped up on the on what you guys are putting out there so i went into this um kind of change of um ideology or you know uh, approach 
Yeah, well, it sounds like you have fun with your workouts. What do you think, Justin, if we did old time for him? I know. I was just thinking that yeah. just in terms – because I liked the earlier advice of like, you know, kind of shaking it up and focusing on a skill or something that your body like really needed to – um, learn uh, and teach that way too. It also like will fill a lot of the gaps in terms of strength and, and be able to kind of push you forward and and get those numbers going back up again. Uh, I do think it it really challenges you in such a different way than you've ever experienced. So I'm I'm all for it. If you guys I like are. that. No, yeah. I like that. I think someone like you, if you did old times, if you're, ga- if you're game for that, that would yeah. be awesome. It's, it's so different, but it's it is strength it, it, training. It, really it is, is muscle a, building. But it's difficult, the, but it's it's really fun. But the exercises and the programming is stuff that you know that people don't do anymore in the gym. So what you'll get out of it is you're going to develop a really strong back, shoulders. Your core is going to develop and strengthen like you've never experienced before. Yeah. Um, and uh, your grip, grip strength, yeah. yeah, yeah, rotational ability in terms of like being able to stabilize. So lots of that stuff plays such a huge factor in strength. People don't consider. Uh, the more stable you can create uh, uh, within your joints, the more uh, weight you're going to be able to put up. It's so. an it's a new program, and we're just starting to get emails now from people following it. And my favorite email, because this is one I'm seeing quite common, is oh, I did. I'm doing old time. Went to go test some traditional lifts, and I, I hit new PRs. I'm like, well, mm-hmm. that's what Justin said. They're filling in the gaps. Yep. Uh, with new exercises, so I'll send that to you if you're interested. That would be great. Yeah, that would be fantastic. And to build on that one more, and I don't want to take too much, but um, PED looks really interesting to me. No. And I, I feel like for a, for a guy working 50, 45, 50 hours a week, yeah. maybe I'm I'm definitely pushing myself too much with yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, no. um, mm. I, I kind of figured that would be your guy's answer, but that was honestly what was – I was I was planning to put next on my plate. Oh yeah, don't do that. Um, don't yeah. do that. Don't do that. If you quit that. your but job, do bodybuilding full yeah, time. Yeah, you're gonna be a pro bodybuilder. Start taking yeah. some we'll, we'll talk, but You're gonna yeah. get the the the, the, the yeah. You're gonna love old time strength. You're gonna you're gonna hate it at first, love it by the end. Yeah. So what you're gonna hate is it's gonna be very challenging, and there's you're gonna, gonna feel be, like a total newbie. Yeah, and there's gonna yeah. be movements. You're gonna have to really reduce the weight at first. But the fun part is this is something that you're gonna be able to see yourself see that ten percent increase every yes. single week because it is new novel. So novel, you're gonna see great gains again which is fun and it's yep. exciting yeah i'm excited i want to i want to hear your i want to hear uh, as you go through too so make sure you circle back chris and let us know wh- uh, what your progress is like i definitely definitely will all right brother you have Th- a good one thanks chris thank you so much guys have all a good right. one all right. i know exactly what you were thinking adam the entire time <laughs> <laughs> what a beautiful head of hair you had <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say yeah. it, but yeah. like, he, like his resting face is a little bit villainy. Oh, you know? really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's just like, oh, Justin. <laughs> of course, Justin goes there. <laughs> I was going to say it. Yeah. You, you know, I mean, three years, this is what happens. Like the first few years, sometimes the first year, sometimes it lasts like a few years, depending on where you start. I mean, you, you can get addicted and think that the, the train's going to keep going. Like, yeah. oh, every, every month I'm stronger. Every month I get better. Every month I can add volume. I'm progressing. I'm progressing. At some point, you, it just doesn't work that way. Yeah, and then you got to get a little bit more creative. It is so it's a hard much harder. Reality. It's listen if you're if you've been working out consistently for five years, to get you to add ten pounds to a lift that you practice often is a miracle compared to getting you know a beginner to add fifty pounds to a lift. It just gets more yeah. challenging because to get your body to further adapt, like you got to get more creative. And that's where he's at right now. Well, the advice that you gave with the old time strength is great because I think this is the hack that uh, we share all the time, how we keep ourselves motivated to keep doing different stuff is like, if you're, if I'm always doing the same type of lifts and training that can get really tough to see consistent. In fact, when you get to the 10 years plus of lifting like that, you have stretches where you're just weaker for a long period of time. You just accept it. Yeah, you just have to reconcile. Yeah, it's just that's part of the game. Like you've been doing something, you're not going to be, especially as we're getting above 40 years old, like you're not going to be seeing the PR you hit after 10 years of training when you were 30. You know what I'm saying? Like the the likelihood you're going to see that is just, is super rare. So in order to keep that like fun, oh, I'm, I'm seeing gains, I'm getting better, I'm getting stronger, is keeping it novel, changing it up to different type of modalities. What I like to do is take one of my my same age friends to the gym. And then it makes me feel <laughs> way better. <laughs> myself, oh, it's yeah. a good little hack. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Our next caller is Caleb from Canada. What's up, man? How can we help you? Hi, I'm uh, super excited to be here. Thanks for having me on your show. You got it. All right. Um, so f- before I get into my question, I just want to say thank you guys, um, not only for all the fitness stuff, but also just being such positive role models for young men like myself. And 
just demonstrating what it's like to balance fitness with life and how to be a good father and just good people overall. So thank you. Oh, thanks, thank man. you, man. Yeah, thanks, man. Um, so I'm just going to read my question as is, and then you guys can ask me any follow-up questions if you want. Um, so my question is, what is the best approach to transition from a purely endurance-based goal to a pure strength-based goal? So for background, I'm 23 years old, 5'8", and currently around 155 pounds. I was a high-level hockey player for years until an injury and COVID forced me to quit. When I played, I was about 180 and was pretty strong for my size. Over the course of the pandemic, I got into endurance training as a way to escape the lockdown and got really into it. Last summer and this summer, I completed a number of endurance events, including marathons, bike races, and a few Ironman triathlons. While I enjoyed it, I missed getting strong and lifting heavy uh, in the gym like I did when I was an athlete. And so I wanted to set a strength-based goal. Wow. Oh, yeah, that's sweet. You did, you did some triathlons, huh? Yeah. Wow. You're an athlete. How far, how far removed are you from this? Like, Are you just coming off of doing one? Uh, yeah, so I just completed a, a half Ironman uh, this past summer. Um, it was end of July. Okay. This is this is actually going to be really cool. This is I, an easy I, transition. It is, yeah. and this, you just get started in a strength program. And I think you're going to see awesome. Oh, you're going awesome yeah, to be starving for it. You're going to yeah. pack on, especially if you feed yourself while you do it. You're going to pack on muscle like it's nobody's business. Maps anabolic, right yeah, out the gate, hundred percent with the, in a calorie surplus. That's with it. Surplus. Yeah. yeah, maps anabolic. I would have you aim for. Let's see, you're 155. I would go for about 165 grams of protein. Do you know what your calories look like, Caleb? Uh, yeah, so I'm I'm actually kind of a, a pretty big eater. So um, I'm at around like 2,800 to 3,000 calories right now. Okay. Um, and yeah, I usually get north of 200 grams of protein. Oh, really? You can go ahead and keep it there. Yeah, you're Keep it there and lift, maps anabolic, and you're going to blow up. Are you doing anything uh, like, are, are you playing pickup hockey during the week and doing other stuff activities or are you, are you pretty much just working and then now going to be working out? Um, yeah, pretty much just working. I like, I like to do just uh, go for like one or two cardio sessions a week, kind of under an hour um, just to keep, keep on. Yeah, that should on be it. And then uh, just recreational stuff like uh, intramurals, but nothing, nothing intense. Caleb, how, how important is it that you maintain a, some level of athleticism during this muscle building process? Um, ideally, if I could, I would like to. Okay, uh, mm -hmm. I'm gonna change yeah, my be a little bit. Athletic. I'm gonna change my advice then. I'm gonna send you Maps Performance. Maps Performance will pack muscle on you, okay. but it's athletically based, so you're not gonna because Maps Anabolic will pack muscle on you too, but it's very sagittal plane. Basic lifts, no rotation, no lateral stability, yeah. and uh, you'll lose a lot of your athleticism doing that. But mass performance, you'll maintain a lot of your athleticism I mean, while you build. It'd be more of a bridge, but I mean, you could do anabolic with mobility sessions instead of trigger sessions and maybe go in that direction just to hit like on those different planes of motion. Um, it, but yeah, like I, I do think like performance would be a good, like natural kind of follow up to that, to then maybe even like anabolic right after. I mean, it's been a while since we kind of disagreed here. So here I, well, I'm more like Justin. So I, you have the RGB bundle, so I would run anabolic. I would do the mobility days before he's, he's playing intramurals. He's going to keep yeah. his sport. He's going to keep his athleticism up. If you're playing intramurals. Uh, every week and you're yeah, running you know what's going to happen what? so because so, this might happen look he's 155 pounds he was 180 mm -hmm. he's coming out of extreme endurance training he starts lifting he's going to throw muscle on his body so fast no he's not now if he's running twice a week well, and doing intramurals yeah, if he, if no, he he's maintains not. like uh his his yeah exactly like his, yeah you i mean stuff. are you taking steroids are you? Is that what the lab is? Well, no, are you taking a bunch of? Are you, are, you are you about to take a bunch of D ball and now stuff? We're right? somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if he's if he's natural, I mean, he's uh, good luck throwing. Well, if he third. did triathlon, look, if you did an Ironman, he's Man, in Mexico right now. <laughs> you know, if you did, if you're doing Ironmans, you've got a, and, and high level hockey. You've got he's got really good genetics. I I bet you. The kid packs on 15 pounds in a two, three month period with eating that much food yeah. and heavy lifting. I think he'll that's gain a, muscle. Yeah. That's a lot of mass. Yeah. And well, I mean, but, but okay. How competitive are you looking at in terms of like you playing hockey again? Like, or like, is that something that you want to aspire to then do like some kind of amateur league, almost semi pro? Like, what are you looking at? Uh, no, it's pretty much just, just, just stay active. 
Yeah. Go get Jack. So it's just for fun. Yeah, dude, get get swole. You'll you'll gain more on maps anabolic, but you're gonna lose more athleticism. Maps performance will still pack muscle on you, but you'll be more athletic with I mean, it. I mean, so think you can make that choice. I think he's gonna have a hard time eating enough calories if he's doing intramurals, he's running twice, and then he's running a, a performance. I think there's too much. Remember, phase one of performance is like I know. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, he's not going to not like build muscle, but the the protocol for me would be maps anabolic. It throw in some of the mobility sessions from performance on days that you're going to go for your run and, and play intramurals. Mm -hmm. now and you're going to get fucking strong as shit. You're going to keep rotational strength. You're going to have you're going to have a little bit of your endurance. You're going to you're going to be fine. Well, hold on a second. Here's one other thing I'll say because you already have the RGB bundle. So everything that we're saying, you already have. I want to give you something um, just for calling in. Um, you like competing because of the competition aspect. Would you ever consider competing in a strength sport? Um, I would consider it, yeah. All right, I'm going to send you MAPS Powerlift. You can have it. If you want to compete in powerlifting, this is, will be perfect. And He already has that, too. He's got that, too. <laughs> this kid's great. You got everything. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Champion. All right. Well, yeah, there you go. That was just to confuse you more. Yeah, Stick just, to what Justin and I said. You'll be fine. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I agree. Yeah. 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 You'll, be, you'll be fine. Yeah. The, do you have? The, do you know what you want to do, or do we just confuse the shit out of you? Yeah. <laughs> um, well, so there's a there's kind of a challenge, um, like an unofficial challenge at school. That's uh, get your um, like three big lifts up to a thousand pounds. Oh. Um, so I was kind of looking at trying to get as close as I can to that. So, so definitely, our advice is better than Sal's. Mass for sure, anabolic then. or mass yes. power lift, yes. yep. for sure. And then literally awesome. just just pull the just the mobility days. Before you, anytime you go do a run or anytime you're going to do intramurals, take one of the mobility days from performance and do it before you do that. That'll be good for you. Yeah. Other than that, follow Maps Anabolic. Yeah. And eat ca calories. Get super jacked. It'll and keep me, keep me posted. I'd love to hear if you put on 30 pounds overnight like Sal thinks you're no, going to do. I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down. Yeah. Because I want to know. I want to know what you're doing over there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Awesome. All right, buddy. All right, man. All right, Thanks for calling in. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Take care. You, you know what this was right here? What just happened? Mm. <laughs> this was a case where all of us are in a gym as trainers. Uh -huh. He walks in, wants to hire a trainer. Young kid. I want to build muscle. Uh -huh. We're all like, oh, I'll train Come you. Here. <laughs> Come here, dude. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what that was. This would be so fun. Oh, my God. It's going to be so fun. I mean, yeah. he can't really go wrong as long as no, he does it. The, I, well, I mean, he was already 180. So he's already got muscle memory on his side. Mm-hmm. He's already done Ironmans at the age of what twenty something years old. He's all and, and high level hockey. He's he's got some. He's definitely got some genetic the potential. Athleticism's there. there. Yeah, he, like muscle building potential. I there. feel very confident if he did the right stuff, like fifteen pounds in a few months of lean body, it would be easy. Yeah, to add to his body. Yeah, sure. I mean, I can't wait to see. I mean, he's he's got himself in a, a great position to do that for yeah. for those exact reasons. I mean, I know what it's like to be a twenty three year old kid though that still likes to do a lot of activity. I mean, the hard part will be the calories, in my opinion. I mean, <laughs> activities. Yeah, yeah. coloring. <laughs> getting, so many activities. Yeah, getting getting enough food in uh, to support you know building that much muscle in addition to doing some runs and yeah. doing intramurals is just it's it's tough did he say why he was in the lab by the way was <laughs> no. that school what was yeah, that? he yeah. was avoiding uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he didn't he didn't yeah. answer that yeah, yeah. Okay. Breaking yeah. bad all right cool send us some stuff Caleb. yeah our next caller is michael from oklahoma michael what's happening how can we help you hey guys how you doing thanks for taking my call appreciate the opportunity to chat with you today you got it all right um yeah, so I'll jump right into it. So um, I'm a runner. I'm going to read off to the side here as I read through my question to be sure I get it right. So I'm a runner turning into strength training on my second time through MAPS Anabolic. Um, Love the program. Had some great results for myself from it and looking to continue to build strength gains to where I want to get, you know, my bench press up to about 225, squats around 250, and um, deadlift around 300. So strength gains for me is very important. and everything that I'm working towards. On top of that, I have a couple other, my three other sons who are trying to get into strength training and I'm looking for some advice on bringing the younger generation into strength training and how I can use some of the content here to inspire them. So my youngest son, he's 14, about 5'11", 120 pounds, really lean. He's on his cross country team and has a goal of wanting to get stronger. My middle son is 5'17", 17, um, around 500, um, 5'10", 140 pounds. He's competitive into volleyball, 
not into anything cardio wise, just wants to build his strength and ability to jump and bigger, bigger and better serves. And then my oldest son, 19, he did the cross country competitive through high school and still he's really lean as well, similar to my youngest one. And he's just looking for more, you know, dexterity and um, coordination and confidence to be able to move his body in the way he wants to. So in, in general, you know, my, re my real question is, how do I program and inspire this for these three different sports on top of my personal goals with myself to continue to get stronger and lift heavier? But at the same time, I need to bring my kids up into it. So do I program differently based on their sport? What age is appropriate for strength training? And what buttons from your experience can I press to increase their appetite and desire to hit the gym? Yeah. yeah. So, so that being so said, yeah. another way to recommend it would be, um, you know, any tips for convincing them to just get after it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, so here's a, here's a cool thing. They're all, none of them do strength training yet. Right. They do not. Their, their current programs are, the, the youngest one he runs in his high school cross country team. Yeah. And it's a morning run and an afternoon run, maybe some ab workout, zero strength. So the, the cool part that. and then the competitive volleyball, it, it's self on your own. Cause when they show up for that, it's, um, it's outside of school. So it's all just volleyball practice. So the cool part about that is that even though they're all different ages, they have different sports and goals standard just strength training for them is going to contribute to all their goals that's how yeah. you would start any so that's what's that's what's cool is like even though they're different at different ages different goals because it's it's they haven't done any like foundational training foundation, they're yeah. that just doing that which so they all basically can follow the same routine and get benefits for their sports it doesn't start it, to get sports specific until later yet. so that's the, the first training. fundamental characteristics to it yeah so strength's a big component to that and really like in terms of how we structured mass performance this is what we consider because uh, to be able to create something that was kind of generally hits a lot of those uh, main attributes that a lot of athletes benefit from uh, we would try to structure in a way where the first phase is really like strength focused strength centric uh, and to be able to learn how to to lift uh, a lot of these compound lifts and 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 master that process first uh, to, to build and establish that foundational strength then we move into multi-directional type of strength so uh, when you're an athlete you have to consider a lot more different variables than you do uh, just somebody that's just focused on building muscle so to be able to be strong and move in different planes and twist and rotate and uh, go laterally is is utmost importance with that, which then follows that up. We get into more of a, a, a speed power type of, of training where we want that snap. So we want that speed uh, and to be able to control that and decelerate appropriately, which then leads into more of the conditioning, which they're already, you know, uh, very, very capable of and are already uh, applying that uh, with their specific sport. But all of that will translate well uh, towards their individual needs. So I was thinking performance and suspension training. Yeah. That's what came to mind for me was like hit dad running performance in the garage. Like if you guys are all working out together in the garage and then also having a suspension trainer in case you have to. Yeah, but none of them do anything now. Uh, they need to do at least a few weeks of very base, like pre-phase maps. Anabolic. Well, so that's why I thought suspension trainer. Yeah. Suspension trainer, I think, for young kids is such a great tool. Oh, because to start of, with? Yes, to yeah, start yeah, with yeah, that. Yeah. And then they can see dad doing performance and then eventually work into some of his stuff. And you like, guys can all work out together. You know, doing that. That, that, was what that I, would be the way I'd motivate everybody is to make it a family. Totally. A family workout. As far as the appetite is concerned, Mike, uh, proper strength training stimulates appetite, tends to stimulate appetite as the body wants to build muscle. And then your job is going to be there, is going to be to feed it. Yeah, the main thing I would do is, is help them hit their protein target for their, their yeah. weight. Like, let's get that many. Like, that would be the main focus. And then I would allow them to pile calories on at their age. Just whatever. I mean, literally, if they hit their protein intake, all the other calories, like whatever they want, I'd almost yeah, let them do. Yeah, shakes are really valuable for, for kids at this age, especially in the morning. You know, teenagers don't like to eat in the morning. <clears throat> so having like a, a shake right. in the morning, a high calorie hmm. shake with like, you know, milk, whey protein, throw some peanut butter in there, some fruit, and then here you go. And it's like 600 calories. And it gets them started on the on the right track. I, have you heard me talk about the the peanut butter chocolate uh, shake that I used to, I make? I love. I think that's like uh, milk and banana and two tablespoons of peanut butter and a tablespoon of Nutella and then your favorite vanilla whey 
shake. I mean, that makes a like a like a Reese's peanut butter cup type of smoothie in the morning and blend it on ice. And that's good. Like what's was that six hundred calories? Oh yeah, at least mm-hmm. that. It's, it's close to seven hundred calories in the morning right there, and a good forty plus grams of protein. It's a it's a great. Great protein. Yeah, I was just thinking while you guys were talking because I, I do like the suspension trainer, but also too like the the way map symmetry structured um, in terms of learning uh, how to how to basically control your body first, and, and so thinking that like so your youngest is fourteen, right? Uh, and then That's you right. know those ages in between that that are more uh, in high school. Um, that honestly for for me is the biggest importance is like being able to control the body and be able to have it go through proper mechanics and range of motion we cover a lot of that like in the first few phases of uh symmetry uh which would then naturally lead into like something like performance because just jumping them in i agree it's it's a bit like more on the advanced side in turn well intermediate i would say well that's the greatest challenge you're going to have here without us seeing the kids move is, and this is again, why I like suspension trainer so much is just the stability component and the control that it they're going to cover. That, it yeah. forces them to learn that right where, I mean, I've had kids that are 12, 13 years old that just are just have the gift. You can tell them chest up, shoulders back, head up. And they like just, they're, they'll organize their body into perfect form by, by cueing them. Then I have other kids where I could literally be holding and pushing their body and they just, their body's out all over the place and they, they don't have good control and stability. And so really depending on where the kids are there, which if they have no strength training background, there's a good chance they might kind of be all over the place. Yeah. So, so I love the suspension trainer that. for this because of the instability component. It really, and it's safe. Yeah. Such a safe way to get them into really strength training and running them through that first before I yeah, took them into- Yeah, what's cool about that too, Michael, is you could get uh, you know four suspension trainers and all of you could do Everybody the exercises could do it once. Yeah, that's you, a good point. You guys can all do them at the same time. Uh, and you would like maps. Yeah, you, would, you would get benefit out of suspension training too. So you guys could you could hook up four suspension trainers and you all do a set together and then rest together and then do another set together and literally just follow the program as it's laid out. Yep. And then it'd be awesome because that really does hit on the, all, all the buttons, right, Adam? As you're talking about the the stability, because I think sometimes they're just afraid to put that barbell yeah. on their back and. Yeah. Yeah. the weights and try to That's do a, a true squat and so it, they just don't do it what's, in that case so what's this cool with the suspension yeah. trainer too is that the resistance is kind of natural because you're using your body weight so it's it's it tends to be more appropriate mm-hmm. um right out the, and you can do it at the same time you know unless uh, unless you get five barbells very and easy to scale yeah. everybody could do it together and you all do a set together and then you all rest and it becomes like this fun this so fun this time. this is what i want to do i'm going to have doug send map suspension to you i also want him to send maps performance because i think this is what will be a great program for you to progress to and then if the kids are ready they can do it, join you afterwards when you get maps performance you, you should also get a follow-up email doug right he'll get a follow-up email for 50 percent off of the suspension trainer itself for suspension yeah. yeah. That's what okay. no, I said. You said well, performance. I, I uh, believe so. Maybe I can just have uh, Jerry. Send yeah. Can it. you make yeah. sure that he gets that? So you'll get half. So the, the suspension trainer is only 50 bucks. They're normally like a hundred and something bucks. So for 50 bucks, you can get one. You can get three of them or four of them for all of you guys. And then all, and then after that, you could follow performance. But suspension trainer for the kids and you would be a great, great workout all together to introduce them that. And then as they start to progress and build confidence, then maybe, maybe move them into maps performance. But by the way, doesn't hurt to keep having them run through suspension. I mean, that's yeah. a, that they could run that over and over mm-hmm. until they build the confidence. And maybe what happens is they go through it once or twice. You've now moved on to performance. They're still doing their suspension. They see you doing the barbell back squat or something. They want to get in there and try it with you maybe for a set or two. And you kind of slowly introduce it to them that way totally. uh, as they feel confident. And then eventually when you see like oh, okay they're starting to move this this barbell pretty good okay i feel right that they're ready for performance so that's kind of how i would gauge it outstanding yeah i appreciate that and then, then the shake the shake for breakfast in the morning i was kind of hesitant on some of that but i think i need to spark their appetite as well so the strength training and then a shake in the morning yep mm-hmm. get that appetite boost and that metabolism going to Get get hungry. Yes, need them to be hungry because totally. then they'll take the calories. In. Yes, 100%. yeah, that's a huge. Yeah, and with that breakfast, that's it. Sure. So that one's an even easier one. Okay, I can you can only imagine having three boys in the morning and everything you got probably going on with work life too could be a lot. Uh, creatures of habit. The the oatmeal with thirty grams of protein already in it. Like that's a and all you do is add hot water. 
So I think that's a solid, you know, if you don't have time to blend. It's a good fast option. Yeah, it's a fast, quick, good, and it will stimulate that appetite. So uh, do uh, check that out for sure if you haven't tried that yet. Yeah, outstanding. So uh, I appreciate the time to, to chat with you. That really is helpful, helpful advice. And just want to say keep up the content. I wish I would have connected with someone like the Mind Pump show when I was younger, <laughs> you know, now that I'm here and you guys have great content and it's, it's just a powerful to hear men talk about fatherhood and all that stuff in a positive light. So awesome. Thank I you. appreciate that. Right on, I appreciate Mike. that. Hey, I would, I would, if you get all the boys doing it, I'd love a video yeah, of all yeah. you guys working We'd out like in the garage. It. Email, email it to us if you uh, get everybody on it. We'll do it. All right, buddy. Thanks. Hey, thank you. You got it. I didn't expect this the sleeve tattoo to peek out when he pulled his sleeve. Out. Oh, oh what's up, Mike? <laughs> he's, he's got a secret it. badass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I hope he doesn't see the earlier guy I gave a free suspension trade. <laughs> Adam's like, I'll give you fifty percent off. <laughs> he's got too many kids. Yeah. yeah no, Come on. Well, I just know what you're going to get shit for when we hang up here I is know. our team that has to go like shipping thing, actual that. thing. It's easy for us to give a digital free stuff. Of course, shipping free stuff is kind uh, of a headache with all those I stuff know. we were to do. But so. I, yeah, I think that you were on point with the suspension trainer, and, yeah. and then they could all do. Together, really. Yes, right? that's yeah, that makes, that makes, makes the most up. sense for right now for their immediate needs. Totally. And and what we don't know, and that's why I think that's the go to default answer is I mean, maybe one of his boys or all of them have great biomechanics yeah, and then exactly. you could throw them right to performance and they would be great, right? But if they don't, and I, and I like where you were going with symmetry with the isometrics because that, you know the isometric is such a great place to start kids but it's also not very fun and it's also very hard sure. to get buy in and if I'm yeah. trying to get buy in yeah I'm, I'm always seeing an ideal right yeah like my, my best case scenario at least to draw it out yeah. first and then I kind of reduce it back like okay yeah. well what, what actually are they going to be able to apply right now and what makes the most sense and, and, yeah. and uh, suspension makes the most sense and that, well, the, good I, thing, the good thing too is with kids like this who've never lifted they're going to get benefits from basic any, strength anything. Training. Yeah, they yeah. could. I mean, they could just do yeah, push-ups 100%. and pull-ups and bodyweight squats in their and they'll bedroom. See, they'll see muscle development, that, and that's that. why the suspension trainer to me is the the easiest introduction to getting them to liking and and doing it. It's kind of fun. It's yeah. easy, like you said. Is dad? They could all do it together. Like yep. that would be a great experience. I think that's the money move. Totally. Look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out some of our guides. We have free fitness guides. They're all free on that page. You can also find all of us on Instagram. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump DeStefano. And Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. 